Speaking of saying yay like that, Nikocado Avocado does it a lot. Um, he's like stopped uploading entirely. What's happened? Uploading on calories? Well, both that and videos, presumably, because oh, wow. I would have thought, um, I wouldn't have, I would have thought anything would stop him except something, you know. But I wouldn't. I, I thought he had some more time. I don't know, you know. I don't. I don't know if something happened. Some more time, like he's. I mean. To be fair, he could drop dead any second, and no one would be surprised. I mean, that's like the joke everyone makes, but I mean, it's true. I'd, what if it did happen? I don't know. Um, I'll check again in a second. I remember, I remember thinking like, "Oh shit, gone for a while now." Yeah, there's even a, a, a video in like researcher's name called "Nikocado Avocado Has Quit." Let's hope he's getting help. Yeah, I mean, you know, I always thought there's, there's the chance that it's all bullshit and that he's just waiting to get a certain amount of money before he you know, lives his life healthily and moves on with someone else, because it will be great spending each day eating mountains. Every waking and... moment of your existence just being that, yeah. Well, when he used to be like a twig, you know? Yeah, but... but, but... How difficult would it be to go back when you've been having mountains of fast food every day? I just, I would just find that disgusting. Um, I think, well, I was about to say a lot of people do that. I was like, well, suppose a lot of people don't too. I guess if you don't have much of a palate, which, like, I have, I'm not a very picky eater at all in terms of quality and stuff. But even after I, like, I just don't eat fast food. I just don't think it's. It, I don't feel good when I eat it. It just has this <laughs> taste to it, and I'm like, ew. This it's so is... funny because I'll be like, yeah. "Rags, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I do eat it, but I don't disagree with the outcome." I'm uh, I really like KFC. <laughs> KFC is wonderful. Uh, but so so uh, like a, a a couple of different fast food. It's not like I've ever eaten fast food and gone, you know what? I feel like I just ate a rotting plum or some shit. Like it, it's, you know, it's. It does the thing it's supposed to do, which is appeal to like. Yeah, keeps you not dead. Yeah, um, but you know, some of it's some of it can be really gross and shit if if it's like from if it's a bad day yeah. from a bad place. Um, what is what is the best of fast food? You guys gotta. Oh, it, around here, the highest tier fast food until it starts to graduate into proper restaurant. I don't know. Um, fast food wise, Chick Fil A is pretty high up there. Their stuff's typically pretty darn good mm -hmm. as far as fast food goes, and their service is really good. Um, they treat you with respect when you walk in that store. But Wendy's isn't terrible. Um, on the what about like fast food curve? It is strictly taste. It, it, what would rank the highest? Ooh, there's been some places I've gone to. There was a place called Cookout in South Carolina I went to. That was pretty darn good for fast food. Uh, the you guys know the chain Whataburger? No. I've heard of it. Um, but well, the original it. Whataburger, it Whataburger is Feltner's Whataburger in Russellville, Arkansas. I've been there a few times, and I don't think it's part of the franchise proper. Like, it's sort of its own deal. It's not like the other Whataburgers, which I don't really like at all. But the Feltner's Whataburger is just clearly better than all of them. Oh, and yeah. So that one's pretty good. Not to make any mistakes. Obviously, Trungo's is number one, but this is just... Obviously, yeah. yeah. They're, uh, they're the chickpea grumbo. grumbo. That's the one. Mm. Oof. How do it they do it? How meal. do they do it? I don't know. They have rats and chef's hats over there, man. I think, um, funnily enough, KFC probably does actually score pretty high for for me, at least with my memory of a lot of different fast food places. It's but, weird that uh, you say that because around here, chick or uh, I almost said chickpea grumbo. Uh, <laughs> KFC does not have a, a very good reputation. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Grumbo. <laughs> Kentucky Fried <laughs> Grumbo. <laughs> um, well, well that, you have that's... gumbo though, and that could be quite good. I find that interesting as well that uh, there are like fast food chains that have higher and lower reputations based on which area you're in because of 
literally just how that one is run, I guess. Uh, yeah. Individual franchisees, things like that. In some places, like, I mean, Chick-fil-A is a good example. They have pretty high standards on who runs the, um, who runs each individual store because they try to keep up a level of quality, which has, mm. of course, led to them being incredibly popular everywhere they go all the time. Wow. Those things are just money printers here. Like, uh, Chick-fil-A has... Like, the logistics of their drive throughs are immense. They have... Just, whenever a Chick-fil-A goes up, they factor in the space it takes to have multiple lanes of a drive through and people taking orders and marking them down. It, it's really... It, I mean, it's a quite a system they have to keep that thing running smooth. It's really incredible. Because they're always busy. Always busy, it seems. No matter where they are, where you go. It's always busy at Chick Fil A. Um. Alrighty. So we 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 gathered here today to do Room Labs and episode one one nine six. I think it was for the the extra bit about Thor, where we had a chat about how great Thor was. So we'll try and do those two, and if and then if we've got time after that, we'll 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 check out today's ones as well. Why not? Um, so let's start with Streamlabs. First one is about Stray. It says, don't sleep on Stray, Mauler. It isn't just a cat simulator for cat lovers. I re don't even really like cats. It's a neat little game. It would be good for streaming. I did end up streaming it. Um, and it is kind of good for streaming. I would agree with that. But, um, not sure if it's worth the price tag at this point. And I don't know that, let's say, you know, poor Fringy and poor Rags here were just unable to play it. Just absolutely, like, completely blocked out. It was banned on their PCs specifically. And if they said, oh, gee, uh, how much have I missed out on, usually? And I'd be like, uh, I think you'll be fine. I mean, you could watch some cat videos, and you'd probably get everything you need. Just because cats are cute, and, and the, the game does that. Mechanically speaking, it's literally nothing you've not played before. Um... I think the more fascinating part to me is the environment. It's like uh, you're picking up pieces of information about how you're basically in a world that's been blocked off from the world we're more familiar with, and uh, robot people live down there. It's like, huh, I wonder what this is all about. Um, but you know, it's a neat game, and I'm, I'm not surprised a lot of people really like it. Uh, hi, Rags. Hi, hey. I very much enjoyed you cover of the most stupid guy on YouTube. So when he came back with an even worse response, I was rewarded with even more laughter and joy. Thank you to bad. We are all mildly racists. <laughs> okay. It seems to be the case. He can never escape it. Is, this is your original sin. Is that the summary of a lot of the work we do? Thank you to bad. <laughs> Thank you, bad, Thank for you existing. Thank you, bad. It allows us to uh, to have a response that can be fun, engaging, insightful, preferably. So thank you, bad. Uh, also, thanks for recommending Buffy. I plowed through the first season, and I liked it mostly, knowing that it'll get better, and I'm excited. Hey. How I like the first season. That's good. Uh, it, like I've always said, if, if you like the first season, you're going to love the show. If you don't like the first season, you'll probably still like the show eventually. Don't worry about it. What a week of unintentional hilarity. Moore's botched Sonic drawing, Rags audibly farting during Super Chat reading, and Pawn Sight bots entering Metal's Forged chat after he finished reading the most dramatic quote from Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Aww. <laughs> it sound like, uh... It sound like some highlighted events, yeah. All over the internet as well. Always different areas. Beautiful. Um... When Molly eats dinner, he prays and goes, thank you, bad, for providing me this meal. If it's shitty fast food, then yes, I guess so. Also, as someone just said, watch Angel. Yes, don't just watch Buffy. That would be satanic of you. Um, and I, I just want it on the record, there's nothing wrong with fighting. It doesn't make you a lesser person. Gotta get rid of gas. Important. 
Rags, Organized Chaos, latest response concludes that your videos are made to kiss neurotic and critical drinkers' asses. That you're just taking down it a is... critic of them to get in their good graces. He has some it other is gems. legitimately interesting, yeah. He has some other gems in there, scan through it. Yeah, I've got a, I've, I've got something I'm working on there. It, it is legitimately interesting. He thinks the whole reason I'm doing this is to ingratiate myself with nerdrotic and critical drinker, so mm. that I could, I guess, grow my channel or be friends with him or something. It's, it's really interesting. I can't do it because um... I enjoy it and it's fun, um, <laughs> because it makes me money while I enjoy myself. But well, I, I mean, guess it, that's it, it... yeah. It couldn't be that you genuinely believe what you're saying about these people. It must be that you're nope. trying to gain something. Because that always, to me, has been like, oh, because you don't have real friends. <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Like, it, it, always, it always comes across as really fucking awkward. Cause it's like, that... Oh. It's that streamer, that Twitch streamer mindset of everyone, yeah. you're just doing it for clout, you don't actually believe anything, stuff like that. Nobody does anything because they believe in it, that would be stupid. Or it's it's crazy the opposite, it's like that's the, one of the most important reasons you should do something is because you really believe it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. God forbid we enjoy something that we do. Which Better Call Saul spin-off are you most excited for? Fixing Good, Gustavo in Santiago, Better Fuck Chuck, or Better Rim Kim? Man, all those are so very, very clever. I wouldn't be surprised. You're gonna have to choose, because I don't have much experience with Better Call Saul, so I, I think mm -hmm. this is really a question yeah. for you in particular. Oh yeah, because I, I understand the context so well that I can give a very strong yeah. answer. I would oh, go yeah. with uh, with fixing good. It's about time we get some uh, some positive stuff happening in some, in this in Vince Gilligan's writing. Cause it's oftentimes very sad, you know. That's what I think. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they did try and expand the Breaking Bad universe again with someone else, and maybe it'll maybe maybe we'll get Mike's history when he was a kid. Why not? BBC you. Oh, and then they could do one from a character in that, and just keep going back. Uh, further further in time until we find out when when Walt was born and we'll get a story about that what about when he was like you could make like a sitcom where he's like a dad and there's like three kids one of them's called Malcolm you could, you could, you could have a show about that I think that would be, uh, be a really good idea people would really like it um, and that is it for, for Streamlabs already so I suppose all right We'll go on up to, uh, to the Thors. Second worst box office drop-off in the franchise. And they are celebrating I that. assume after... Is it Doctor Strange? Second one? That would be my guess. Doctor Strange or Black Widow, maybe. I assume Doctor Strange because that one had a surprising first weekend where people were like, whoa, that's doing real well. And then the second weekend wasn't anywhere near as good, which is uh, an interesting new phenomenon for Marvel stuff. I don't know what that means exactly. Like, people do give it a shot, but they ain't coming back or something like that. Um, no one recommends it. Which, by the way, is a, is a quality they should not squander, the fact that people are turning up. But, I mean, they don't feel they're squandering it right now, or at least, I don't know if they're aware of how much is getting squandered. Who knows? Thor, Soy, and Thunder. Oof. Got him. Yeah. Executed. Is there a sword or weapon that is culturally significant to, and then it's just a bunch of blocks? Uh, I don't know what that means. What is the best we medieval Maybe weapon? Maybe talking about Minecraft, in which case it's the sword. Mm -hmm. Diamond swords in particular, or netherite swords, if you're really into that sort of thing. Uh, what is the best medieval weapon for a longoid? For mm. a longoid? Wouldn't it just be long the longsword? Sword? Yeah. Sorry if it, if it sounds like a generic answer, but I mean, sometimes those are the strongest answers. What about a long bow? Why not both? Uh. <laughs> yeah, a longsword and a longbow. Uh, what about a long spoon? Okay, yeah, <laughs> just I mean, a really long spoon on a... Yeah, long, Longoid's got to have breakfast too, you know? That's one of the... Um, I think in the Bible there's uh, some analogy about heaven 
where heaven is like I don't know I don't know like heaven kingdom of God something where it's a bunch of people who are eating at a table at like a banquet oh, and all this, of them yeah. have spoons that are way too long and so they have to feed each other and even as a kid I was like well, why can't you just grip it closer to the your spoon bit yeah what you're talking like, about I get is... your point but I'm like eh. The thing where they say they describe hell and it's the spoons are too long to feed yourself and everyone's struggling and it's all horrible. But in heaven, it's the exact same scenario, except they all figured out they should feed each other. And I don't know what you mean. It's just like, that doesn't sound <laughs> like, why, hey, why don't you just not even use the spoon? Why'd you write, is it, this is the divinely inspired analogy. <laughs> it's not that great. It's actually kind of piss. That's, yeah, I mean, you know, in terms of writing, it'd be like, yeah, I get what you're saying. I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to go with your first draft, guys. The Bible was written in 13 days. <laughs> like Black Widow. They got scrapped, and then they said, can you write it as we're filming? <laughs> this analogy doesn't work very well, but oh well. Like Jesus is alive and they're writing it? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is like 32 <laughs> years old. They're <laughs> like, fuck, we're running out of time. Uh, also high rags. Hello. It's been so long since I've caught this live, and they got a little happy face. Ain't that nice? Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. Mola, what's your opinion on Iron Man 1's mind freeze device and the applications thereof throughout the rest of the MCU? Yeah, that's Obadiah Stane's thing. Um, it seems pretty damn powerful, to the point where Iron Man would probably want to make use of it in lots of scenarios going after that film, but does not, uh, nobody does, it literally doesn't appear ever again, I don't even know if you remember it, Rags, it's a little device that... No, uh, I don't. You open it up and it makes a loud noise and it stuns you, like, oh, completely. Wow. Oh, that's um, really useful. Uh, yeah, a little it's just trap. A, it, it, literally just a handheld handy device, we never see it again in the MCU. Uh-oh. Uh so I don't know how I would categorize that as an issue, if... Iron Man 2 and 3, Avengers, and, well, I guess every film, I shouldn't even say that the Iron Man ones are responsible for answering this question exactly, but all of them aren't doing it. Does that mean we should conclude it's just not viable anymore? I mean, it's a pretty unethical fucking thing, but then again, I suppose, they're the same for a Taser, the whole idea is you use it on people to subdue who are... Yeah, like, it's, it could, like... The only person who might open the box is someone who shouldn't be there anyway, maybe something along those lines. So, um, yeah, I think it's a fuck up that we've never seen that thing again. I think there's implications of that device that it could be weaponized in ways that would make it incredibly effective, like a projectile that does the same thing. I don't see why not. Uh, and yeah, it facilitated story beats in IMM1, but even this is what we, when we talk about like. Time travel, this this all comes back to even stuff like that. If, if you guys are making your scripts, and Iron Man 1 is that grounded except for his suit and tech and stuff, and you see that device, I'd be like, is there any way you can write this without using that device? Because that device has implications, and this is stuff we've got to keep track guys, of. Are you aware of the original Star Trek episode called Operation Earth? No. So Operation Earth begins with something similar. Captain Kirk is giving his little star date, da 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 da, and he explains the situation that we can get into it for the episode. And it begins essentially with We have used the gravitational slingshot of the sun to go back in time to 1960 in order to research the end of the it's the most ultimate hand wave bullshit. Here's why we're here, and arguably the worst episode of maybe Star Trek ever made. Um, so that they could just have an episode that takes place in the 1960s. That show was supposed to be a backdoor pilot for another show Gene Roddenberry wanted to do uh, called Operation Earth, where this guy from like the future or whatever is trying to watch over humanity. So oh, we got to go to the 1960s in Star Trek. Let's go ahead. and. Uh... Yeah, I feel like I've been I think I've picked up bits of this through Red Letter Media's videos on Star Trek. Cause I'm, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah I think that's Gary triggered a memory. Yeah, Gary. Seven. <laughs> Interesting name for a. Uh... A character, <laughs> just in general. Um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's Gary. Gary's a normal name. The seven part I like. Is oh, my that part. Yeah, that is a little odd. Lazarus. I guess if you had to take a name as your your last name or a number as your last name, seven's not bad. Mister Seven. Seven sort of seven sounds nice. There is um. 
uh, an episode of Spring, you'll remember this. There's an episode of, I say Buffy, it's an angel that establishes a mechanic about a certain uh, thing in that universe <laughs> that is so bad and it never gets brought up ever again. It's it's such a interesting thing that that happens in sort of stories where it's like, actually, we can oh, do this. And then like, it's like, yeah. no, no, we can't. <laughs> That's that's really bad that you said that we could do that. <laughs> yep. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't have that same exact idea about the mind freezing device thing, though I don't know how you'd fix that going forward because it's so effective. Uh, and I don't know how Iron Man wouldn't make big use of it. Big, chungus use of it. I think that you get a line from Obadiah saying they, they stop production or allowing of this thing because it's too unethical, which is interesting because it's not that unethical compared to some of the stuff you might have to resort to. Yeah, not there. really. Depending on its implementation, like if it's a trap for people who, like I said, who break in, like if someone's not allowed to like go in your house and you, oh, that would be really cool. It's a non-lethal way to, if a burglar like breaks in, they, they hit the trap and it just sort of stuns them and they're there for a bit and they just have to wait until the it automatically calls the police and they just show up and there's this stunned burglar there waiting for <laughs> and you and you walk up to the area with your little dressing gown on and a little cup of tea like what's uh he's, oh doing? you got him huh it's like yep got him you like like, the, uh, oh, cool it's like the cabinets i had them installed last month i think they're <laughs> nice they match the uh really match the wood wood floors we replace the tile i think that was a good decision just sitting down next to him, waiting for the police. Like, you know, I'd like to talk Come to you about often. how you shouldn't, you shouldn't steal. Stealing's bad. You know, deep down, if you <laughs> dig far enough, there's a moral in here. Yeah, somewhere. What have we somewhere. learned today? Um, oi, Morley, you dunny with the funny? To be honest with you, I don't know what that means, but if it means am I done with being funny? Uh, of course not. Plenty more jokes on the way. Absolutely. We're like the uh, Adam, or sorry, the Sitch and Adam show. Where this is a comedy show, especially as we start to exit Phase Four and we near the entrance of Phase Five, this will become more of a comedy show. Yes, a wholesome comedy show. Hail oh, plot hole. Fun fact: the Metroid series and Kirby series potentially share a universe in Kirby's Whoa. Dream World. In Kirby's Dreamland 3, Samus shows up on Planet Popstar, and you can help her by using an ice copy ability and killing a few Metroids. I, well, to so, me, that, <clears throat> that seems very similar to the uh, Link's Awakening thing, where like Link's Awakening features a lot of cameos of uh, like other Nintendo stuff, like Chain Chomps and stuff. I imagine that they don't really exist in the same universe. It's an interesting phenomenon, though, isn't it? Like, if there's no substance well, at all, thing, just that you're aware they might be in the same universe, that is enough for fans to just go nuts and be happy. I think so. I think it's a really straightforward way of, while never having to deal with all the difficulties of maintaining a real continuity. Yeah, it... um, especially if you have something like um, The Legend of Zelda, which, as far as I know, takes place on just, it's like a fantasy-based, it takes place on one planet... So, and I don't, not huge into my Zelda lore here, but the exploration of the universe and the galaxy just isn't a thing. So, well, the so possibility I think, that um, this is... I think in Link's Awakening, it's, it's, a, it's all, oh, is this a spoiler for like a game that's 30 years old? It's all a dream. Like, it's not, it's, it's like the island is like a dream. <gasps> so there's a... Was he in There's the like a, uh, Wow, purgatory. purgatory. Is everything is everything well, that's, uh, analogy? No, the, pur for... the purgatory is the that's that's the theory for um for Majora's Mask is that that's purgatory. Oh, I was just but, referencing um, Lost. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah, that's um that could explain why you know you could rationalize it's like what's well, this weird surreal kind of place? So that would explain. I guess is what I mean is like loose little continuity and references and things like that can be really fun kind of like what pixar does where um you know you have like references to uh to different places and things in other pixar movies but as for like a continuity it's, you know i guess you can invent one if you want but it really doesn't matter well it just reminds me of when uh the end of uh split happened right like the it reveals that I haven't seen split. he's um well i mean you you probably know about this just through you know, people talking about this that, and the other, but 
at the end of Split, he's in like some restaurant and uh, he's sitting next to Bruce Willis as David Dunn. And everyone's like, "Oh my fucking god, it shares continuity with Unbreakable," and then they regretted that immediately when they saw Glass. <laughs> The final in the trilogy. That is uh, a fascinating sort of study of just somebody destroying their own work for no reason at all. Um, Who, Taika Waititi? <laughs> um, I, I was about to say, it's like, is it worse or better what he does? Like, well, like, probably worse, right? Because uh, M. Night Shyamalan drowns his own character that everyone loves the most in a puddle. A literal fucking puddle he drowns in it. You might ask, how is That's... that even possible? How is that possible? Is he, like, knocked out? Is he Just somebody puts pressure on his head, puts him down into the puddle, and that's enough. Which, oh. you know, yeah, logistically that's possible, but... Uh, wow. Don't give me the whole hey, water is his weakness okay. shit. That is still dr- Like, uh, you understand what in I'm the saying. Same way water is our weakness. True. Enough of Water it. is surrounding us. It has suddenly become quite the the weakness. Here I thought we were friends, and look at us now. But like, it's the equivalent of um, you know, I I just give you like a a pinprick or just enough of a of a wound in the right place, mm -hmm. and you slowly bleed out over an hour and die. And someone's like, yeah, that's possible. Humans can die from blood loss. It's like, yeah, I know, I know, but you chose to do it like that. <laughs> so why did you do it like that? Yes. Not all my criticisms are commentaries on the reality yeah. of its potential. We've said, well, uh, the, I don't even know what kind of criticism we would categorize this as, but like I said, you know, uh, the Emperor could have whipped, that... whipped his dick out and peed all over the, the Emperor's chair, I guess. You, you could do that. that. That's not necessarily out of character. It's just not something anyone wants to see. I think you're just, uh, it, it's similar to how you were talking with uh, uh, Adam and Sitch on the Sitch and Adam show. Um, you talked about the character who just disappears, who just leaves, and how that would be totally logically possible. Characters can do that, but it'd be insanely unsatisfying for an audience, particularly if they like that character, or if it was set up that the character was maybe going to have some sort of a journey or arc or role to play in the story, and they just leave and they just fuck off. Yeah. It's okay. To, yeah, it, it is <laughs> an aspect of... Yeah, I think it's a, a misconception people can probably have where they equate us saying things that are objectively good storytelling is the same as satisfying or things you'd want to watch. That's that's the... I, had, I, I discussed that with a chair in the room when I went uh, when I talked to Adam and Sitch on the Sitch and Adam show um, when I was there on the Disney thing. I was I used that chair example of the five minute long movie where you've got a chair in a room objectively perfect. No one would watch it and I don't recommend you make it. I saw some people say that doesn't count because there's no event. I was like. Technically, there's an event. No event. Um, What's the event? I mean, the the existence of it. But I mean, if we have to, if the chair literally has to be tilted and then it eventually falls over, if that's what satisfies well, you, then fair the same it, thing. I mean, even if it sits in a room, I mean, just the chair existing in a room is necessarily temporal. I mean, you can't exist for no time. It, any video well, and, um, is gonna. I would want it said that. Uh, what if? You know how you tell stories. It doesn't have to quite work in the literal sense of there's something has to move. Or something, because you could have it be that this room, there's a chair in it, but there's also a windowsill, and it just slowly, the camera scans around for the hour, and there's just a series of photos, and they tell a story. That could be it. Uh, yeah. A secret, because you could say that, generally, for con just, just for the sake of, um, just clarity, we say sequence of events, even though it's somewhat redundant, um, but it's just easy to tell people but yeah a, a series of photographs that can be interpreted as a story yeah i think so um, um yeah the point being of course that these are like two different modes uh and that we understand that people you know the, the i think the easiest way to translate that is just should the hero kill the villain in the end or should the villain kill the hero in the end or should the hero spare the villain and capture him or uh you know, should the hero get, uh, like, fight his best, lose, but not be killed, and the villain gets away for another story to be told, which is the correct answer. It's like, well, I, I don't know that. I think it, yeah, it depends on many, many yeah. variables. 
and um, which answer will be the most satisfying for most audiences? Funnily enough, I'd probably say villain is defeated by hero, but at the same time, generally, to say. probably. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, maybe the villain is very likable, and the hero's just an asshole that you don't <laughs> like. You're like, yeah, they're morally right, but fucking hate them. Why would you? Yeah, why would you suggest such a or... crazy thing? Have you been watching the MCU recently or something? No, not me. Not me. I would never put myself in a position where I have to regularly consume NC MCU content. You know, you would have to. You'd have to pay me to watch the MCU. You'd have to say like, "This is your job to get me to watch the MCU." It was crazy when when I met you. I was like, "Oh, there's a there's a couple of MCU movies you haven't seen that are that are really quite entertaining." Like, um. Uh, had you seen Guardians and Ragnarok and stuff at that point? I can't remember which ones you. No, I think seen. we saw them with. Uh, I think I saw them with you um, when we first met. I really wasn't much of a show or movie goer. Um, I could say the Last Jedi was my awakening. <laughs> um, it's where I was born again, and I blossomed into the beautiful flower that I am today. Before that, I was I was pretty I was pretty normy when it came to movie stuff. But TLJ it just it just broke me, and I changed. I. I was like Gandalf. I emerged as Rags the Orange, and I was I was just a new, a new creature. Baptism by confusion, we'll call it. And then, then the dark times. That's today. It does seem like um, <laughs> the sentiment is turning though on some of these like bigger IP, you know, film franchises like Marvel. I seem like more the little more light, yeah. Like man, these, not, I've seen. I think it's been said because people say superhero fatigue, but it's just shit content fatigue. Really. Yeah, like I absolutely. Yeah, it now. isn't superhero fatigue because that superhero fatigue didn't exist when all those movies well, were generally good. Just superhero fatigue hasn't stopped comic book superhero comic books for running for like eighty years consecutively, right? And superhero films being prevalent for the last twenty years. It's superheroes just, are was, too broad. It's there's too much variety was, in that umbrella. Yeah, oh, I, I, I think they're way broader than something broader. like a Western. Uh, I would say so, yeah. All, if everything's great, you know, like, remember, everybody's going to be happy with that. I say remember. We weren't alive then. Well, maybe Fringy was. But there was a time when Westerns dominated media, especially in America, when it Bonanza oh, yeah. and Gunsmoke, the John Wayne stuff. It was huge. Westerns were everywhere. Um, and that was just a, a big thing. And it lasted for quite a while. Um, it lasted for a while, um, which is something that because it was it was probably yeah like a good ten twenty years of like dominance. And this yeah, is thing. let me check out how many bonanza seasons there were. If someone was to suggest be... like yeah, superheroes might uh, falter and lose confidence, and then maybe let's say maybe sci-fi that gets a big old thing and comes in, and I'd just be like yeah, but it's gonna be sci-fi movies about superheroes though, like the. Superheroes are a, almost a cancer in terms of storytelling. They can get into everything, and uh, not in a bad way. <laughs> I, I, maybe there's a better way. Sense, to... not like a yeah, like something else. It's um... like a uh, well, it's more of an um, it's it's kind of like in the same way that science fiction itself is an umbrella term that can describe a lot of things. Superhero is the same, or maybe superhero is more like it's a suffix that you could add to like any genre. Sci-fi superhero, fantasy superhero, like horror superhero, you know? Yeah, whereas it like feels could... much more difficult to get Western sci-fi. You can, but like... Um, oh yeah, it's... It well, starts to compromise. Uh, not, I mean, sci-fi envelops so the West. No, it is a good example, because the Western's gone the second you bring in sci-fi, pretty much. Um, well, yeah, but I mean, Space Western is like a known genre. That's not what I said. What'd you say? I said sci-fi combined with West and will literally like oftentimes kill West and as it exists in the certainly with what Rags was describing it creates like a new oh, genre right, I got you. I got you. meanwhile superhero is yeah, just like, a variable that like can just exist you could throw superhero in the middle of like a running TV show no matter what you can't really throw in Western I, I mean there's probably ways you could Star Trek well, so I was actually going to say, like, there are ways, but it's not as simple as individual who is who is strong and fights crime. If that's what the requirements are for superhero, which even then you don't even necessarily have to go with that. Yeah, it seems so broad at this point. If um, 
you know, like even Logan, right? Is that considered a superhero movie? Surely, right? Surely it is. Yeah, and I feel like that's not even scratching the surface of the potential for this genre. We we still not we've still not really done that. People feel like the boys and and stuff like Logan and that that other show that I think got cancelled. Um, these are these are like subversive and showing the age of the genre. The boys um, is the shallowest version. Exactly. I I feel like we got loads left to do. We've we've often talked about ideas of like what does like the superhero story that has absolutely no fighting or superheroing at all. And exactly the, that. Yeah. Post we, superhero life of a guy. Have we done that? Does that exist? It probably exists in the indie market somewhere. Or like, if you had, yeah, like an art film where it is just a superhero who's like, your significant other is dying of cancer and they just they just have to like, watch, they can't do anything about it, and then you tell their, the story about both of them and how they feel about that. Is it when... um, I looked it up, there are f there are 14 seasons of Bonanza, it went from 59 to 73. However, it is not the longest running Western. That would be Gunsmoke. Really? Gunsmoke ran from 1955 to 1975. It had 20 seasons. Oh, jeez. I know people loved uh, Deadwood, but that didn't manage to make it, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I only got a couple seasons in a movie, right? Course, I um... have been to Deadwood. Hey. Yeah, to where Wild That's Bill probably... Hancock was shot and killed. To where Calamity Jane is buried shows. next to him as well. Oh, is very cool. If you guys ever come to the U.S., I would highly recommend you visit Deadwood. It's a great West, uh, Old West kind of town. Um, yeah, because there's that movie I was mentioning. I saw a trailer for where Sylvester Stallone is like working in some, I don't even know, like scrapyard, and turns out he used to be a you know, like a superhero who's saving the day all the time in this city, but he's retired now. He's old and he's. And there's there's some con maybe some secret thing that happened that he's not told anyone about, but new bad things start happening, and and he ends up in a situation where he's got to make a decision, you know, and then he comes back and maybe he even dies at the end of that film. And I think people would see that as being like, oh, that was pretty, that was pretty subversive. It wasn't just hero origin and then beats bad guy a part of the franchise. But I just um. You know, people say it's like it's, it's evidence that the, the genre's going down. It's just like, if Marvel movies were well written, would we just be saying that the superhero is unstoppable? It's Probably. Amazing to me that uh, they are this bad and they can still crack a billion. Well, they've been struggling, I guess, this year to do that. I guess that's what I'm trying to imply. The way I just framed that yeah. was a little bit more positive than what you could say. Uh, I get, I'm still like I feel like these films shouldn't be making the mo the money they still are. Uh, oh well, I mean it's probably coasting on name recognition at this point and potential for the future that people still have in investment in, I guess. Because like, what would even stop the MCU? I I imagine that budgets would go down before it would stop. Probably, you just find more cost cutting measures. I mean getting implemented, yeah, to, to make it cheaper. Did y'all see Red Letter Media's Black Fode review where they totally shat on Eddie Budson as a character and mocked the iconic Master of Puppets scene? Those guys are such jerks. I, um, it's a weird one. I don't really get it. Uh, cause I think we'd all agree that you want to try and grab some spectacle in your shit where you can. That's, uh, especially if you can justify all of it. That's like, that's like, the, that's what we might call fun. Um, yeah, it it allows you to. Yeah, to like do if some someone artistry. said, you know what, this whole Avengers movie, I'm starting to think that most of this was written just to get us to the place where they're all just fighting shit together. I'd be like, yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> like, it probably was. Uh, yeah, that that's certainly a theory worth exploring. And then if they were like, well, that's I don't know, man, that's just lame. I think stories have a lot more potential than that. Be like, oh. Yeah, sure. That doesn't. Why? Why are we? Why? 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 They should just be here because fuck it. And uh, it gets weird hearing stuff like that from them. So I'd be like, isn't not like the OT is that it's incredibly spectacle? You know. Absolutely. And that's fine. <laughs> I like I like big old spectacles in in movies. It's fun. Or escapism. And pretend for a moment that that shit is actually happening.
Even though it really mm. isn't. It's just on the little screen. Sometimes it's a big screen. Uh, Sometimes it's a silver screen, which is very expensive, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. Full silver, yeah, definitely. Finished Midnight Mass. Everything after episode 6 is awful. Basically, every character is assassinated and any semblance of logic is thrown out. Ooh. We picked, uh, it was What an nine. incredibly hot take. Uh... That is hotter than ours. We, 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 we think it's 9 I that it falls apart, right? Yeah, I, I think the last episode is the one where everything goes to shit. Maybe seven and eight don't hold up as well on a rewatch, but as far as I remember, it was nine that really annoyed me. Yeah, I, we were totally into it completely. I think five was probably, yeah, six and seven and eight. I, I think it all holds up fairly well, but nine is absolutely when it just fucking shits itself. Yep. Luckily, the first eight episodes are so damn good that we'd recommend that show to everyone, regardless of its horrific ending. I still think it would probably take a lot for me to go, you know, like, um, for, for Mike Flanagan in my head to be as bad as, I was about to say as bad as Taika Waititi. That seems harsh, but I guess that's where we're at. <laughs> 2022 uh, in August. Like, if he released a whole TV show that was filled with bad writing, I would be like, wow, maybe this one was rushed. Like, Maybe, I would have so much good yeah. faith for Mike Flanagan at this point, but, you know, this is the thing. I guess what I'm trying to get at is that Midnight Mass has not made me think that I won't get great content from him. Yeah, there's so much good in there that even fumbling the ending as bad as he did still has us super interested to see more. Anything he does, it's like a guaranteed watch for us. Though it does, uh, it is something to wonder, because we, um, we had Hill House, which had a very bad last episode. And we still recommend the show highly. Mm -hmm. We had Midnight Mass came out, even worse final episode, I'd say, and we still recommend it. So there's like already a trend of how bad can the last episode get before we say, Ugh. presumably a, a, a final. Well, I was about to say that, that doesn't apply to Game of Thrones. I pretty much don't recommend Game of Thrones to people, even though there's four seasons of good shit in there. Like, damn, that's how bad the ending is. And like, to be fair. That's how bad 5, 6, 7, and 8 are. Which is such a weird... I mean, that's like Star Wars, right? It's like, do you recommend Star Wars? It's like, do, you, do I recommend watching the OT, and then the prequels, and then the sequels? It's like, uh... Yeah, that's... And, you know, if, if, if it's either you recommend or don't recommend that... If it's all that, or nothing? Yeah. If it's all or nothing... <sighs> I know, right? Damn. Dude, especially it's so with much every baggage fucking attack onto the OT. Every know? Disney show added on as time goes on, too. You're just like, oh, God, so much crap to slog through. You're constantly paying the ferryman for that original trilogy. I think I probably would, though. I think I would. I'd like to think that just that for good, that episode, uh, that, that. Those, those, those two, those three. What up with, you get to have them, you just have to pay uh, your due for that <laughs> in the form of some other stuff. Uh, Yours is a tragedy. Thor fans, Taika Waititi just ruined my favorite character, Hulk fans, first time. Hulk isn't ruined. I think, yeah, we said Hulk, Hulk is in a better position, technically speaking, than Thor. Hulk could be brought back. It's a possibility. Yeah, you can save Hulk. By beginning to save Thor, you put him back onto the roller coaster that he was on. Yeah, it'll be really weird to save Thor now. Because, like, if we were set to write his next film, I'd want to throw out Clown Thor. But I don't even know how we could do this in a way that's in any way going to make sense. You know, like, it's... It might just be, be a... be a guy who enjoys but is still a serious person you know I, I think the key is Thor understands where the lines are like maybe he uses he knows that sometimes there's a time to be serious and sometimes there's a time to be jovial and he can have a personality where he uses humor as a like a coping mechanism or you know, to help get people through things. Well, yeah, that's maybe the preference. I just mean, jovial attitude. where he's currently sitting it's like how do we get him back and it's like maybe we um 
we make a movie where the first 10 minutes establish where it's no different than at least the vibe of Love and Thunder and Ragnarok, and then you make it like a movie about Thor versus Hercules, and gradually the movie gets more and more grounded, serious, and then Hercules actually like kills someone Thor cares about, and Hercules is aware of his history and points out how how much he's clearly coping, basically. How much Thor is doing all this goofy shit and saying all this thing and treating everything like it's a joke because he's he can't deal with the fact that it's his responsibility that he's lost everything. You could try and gradually bring that back and rescue uh, Punish Thor storyline. I think it would be really awkward, but I think people would appreciate it if you took the time to try and get back there. Um, meanwhile, Hulk, you can you can pretty much switch him up in the course of between films, probably. You can be like, uh, we're doing this with, with Hulk now, sort of thing. Uh, I don't know, I just feel like it's harder to undo the damage of Love and Thunder than it is to undo what they've done to Hulk, because we can just do science mumbo-jumbo. Yeah, we, we, he can be doing experiments with Gamma shit again. Something can go wrong again. <laughs> it's just like, oh look, you got uh, the Hulk's back. Woo. I don't know. But yeah, it, it, I just feel like Thor's in a worse place, and uh, I think it would be harder for fans to be like, oh, he's back to being punished. Thor now is that is that right? But uh, you know, if you took the time, got the right bits and bobs with dialogue and. Fuck, I'd be like, if I was taking over the Thor shit now, I'd be tempted to be like, that was a fake Zeus. That was a, a showman's... Zeus is actually busy doing things that matter, and that's just, like, Zeus's... I don't know. Fucking hologram that he just... But that he, even he's then, you the like, gods. What, you believe that shit? I just... I'd like the idea where you... Where a, a, fucking... It's Russell Crowe, too. He could totally play a, a way more intimidating Zeus. But oh well. Absolutely he could. Kenobi. When the time comes, the boy must be trained. Yoda, the boy is too old, about Anakin at nine. Luke and Kenobi is ten, to be trained to be older than ten and younger than nine. I, I don't, I, that's actually probably a good point, that Kenobi's saying, like, he must be trained once he comes of age, but as according to the prequels, and even in, uh, in the OT to an extent, right? Because that's what, when Yoda says that about Luke. Um, too old he is. Oh, sorry, not about Luke, about Anakin. Well, yeah, the, the, the prequels established that they get trained from fucking early as hell. Um, instead of seeing Thor Love and Thunder, I bought Merino wool socks for this fall. No regrets. He bought what? Merino wool socks? Apparently, yeah. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with my wools. I can't, I can't tell you that I know what it means when you say you have Merino wool. Merino, M E or M I M E R I N O. Yes. Huh. Wool socks are really nice, though. Um, I've got a fair amount of pairs that I use for hiking, and I had them in scouts and search and rescue and all that. Wool socks are very well, wool gear in general, but particularly uh, wool socks. Wool is a really great um, material because even when it's wet, it will still insulate you. Socks are objectively better than Thor. I mean, they serve more of a purpose, so I'll give you that. In uh, Hey guys, quick reminder that EFAPing One Punch Man Season 1 would be great to see. I'm sure Rags would love it. Also, the manga is fantastic currently. Yeah, because you haven't seen that, have you? One Punch Man. I haven't. That could be fun to not. do an EFAP. You've TV talked time. about how good it is, so. Oh well, it, it impressed me. Uh, I was I was quite surprised watching. I was like, "Oh, this is this is way better than the stuff I usually see." This um, is way better than anime. Way better than even like TV shows, just regular ones, you know. It has a lot of <laughs> good old heart, uh, wit. I love having them. Finally, catching up on EFAB Live. I'm spending way too much time on the backlog. Love y'all, and here's some Rhino Milk. Ooh, thanks much. Thank you. I love me some rhino milk. Uh, my GF and I were bickering and laughing about how awful it got past midnight, and I was frustrated to the point of laughter. Episode 7 is laughably vomit-inducing. Oh. Um. Fair Sorry, enough. Doctor Who? 
Oh, I think they're talking about Midnight Mass. I assume that... Oh, wait, maybe they're not talking about Midnight Mass. They could be talking about... No, Episode 7, so... Yeah, probably Midnight Buffy? Mass, right? Can't be Kenobi. <laughs> yeah, because they'd be Kenobi. laughing from the second episode, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh... It could be Midnight Mass, absolutely. Are there any plans for maybe TLJs? Maybe 6, 7, and 8 are really... Maybe 6, 7, and 8 really are worse than we remember. I was going to say... For they're... whatever reason, I don't want to say that... The radar. I don't want to say they're gray. They could be... I remember them being fine. We didn't have really any too much in the way of big issues. I think nine was just like jumping off a cliff. Maybe if we were to go back, we'd we'd understand like because I think we were waiting for um satisfying decisions for the characters that would bring a, a you know tie everything up well. But maybe maybe there's some earlier stuff that uh that's even terrible and it's like oh this is poopy earlier on because I'm I'm assuming possibly, yeah. episode six is where um Riley's arc uh finishes off right I think so. Uh, I thought like... that was the end of episode, episode five. five. It's seven, seven episodes. Remember, so it's the end of episode five. Oh, is it? Is it seven episodes? I, I've been operating this whole time thinking it was nine. If it's seven, then I mean that's seven. that's part of what confused me. But I, I'm that makes sense. Ignore everything remember. I've said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Thinking, it's hard like, to keep track. That many episodes? Huh. There's so many TV shows that have different numbers. How am I supposed to remember anymore? It's impossible. How many's Andor got? Is it twelve? I think 12, yeah. And then how many is Daredevil going to have? 18? 18. How am I supposed to remember all this? Ridiculous. Hill House was 9, yeah. Yeah, that's probably what's fucking me up. Because Light Manor was... Was that 8? Something like that. I forget Light exactly. Light Manor was 9, and Hill House was 10. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> well, that's they... what I mean. I've been I've been kind of sitting here this whole time. Like, am I? Have I? Totally what happened between up? five and you know <laughs> five and the the ending? Because five is like that. You know that what? Moment you can remember. Excuse it's me. a great. I even remember one. getting fucked up on this because I always felt episode nine of Hill House was redundant almost, and it's long too. It it like spends a long time telling you stuff you would have already known. It's like um, the POV mum episode, which is something I think is fine to have. It's just the most of her uh, scenes are things we'd seen from other characters' scenes anyway. Um, and then, of course, the last episode. There are some issues. I think Bly was eight. I, I, I could have sworn one of them was nine, but I should just Google this shit from now on. Right? Can't be trusted. However many. I only know how many, there's only two shows that I could tell you how many seasons are in there. It's Bonanza and Gunsmoke. Yeah, which we've always known. That made sense about you. That was a... Absolutely. We just knew that you knew. Are there any plans for TLJ's fifth anniversary yet? So if you mean on our end? No. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever thought about anything. It's not me at all. Like your fifth anniversary for a fucking shit movie. Uh... Um, <laughs> that's... For, uh, sorry, for what movie? For for, for TLJ. I could maybe if, be it wouldn't compelled be for... to do something for his 10th anniversary, like an EFAP movies for that movie, just just as a sort of like, hey, remember when this came out? Because 10 seems like fair enough, but... Um... I mean, I'm fine with a five-year anniversary if it's not, like, too serious, because TLJ is... It's not just a terrible, horrible movie. It's a very important movie in terms of how it shifted movie discussion online it's kind of it's yeah. really a watershed moment and it brought it made us like a podcast it got us together tlj created efap in True. this sort of a, a domino's kind of way it's very direct um and uh so it's I, not a bad idea to i do appreciate a five -year anniversary of it. i appreciate its cultural footprint if i am to be 100 percent fair I think that to this day, it still gets viral posts about how, man, everyone was wrong about TLJ. This film was a fucking masterpiece. You get them every once in a while, but you also get the ones that I find very satisfying, where they're like, uh-oh, people are saying The Matrix 4 is the new TLJ. And it's like, that's your legacy, TLJ. That That's where yeah. you sit. You're, uh, Hundreds of millions of dollars lost revenue, and you've become... Like, it's like, you're the opposite of being the Citizen Kane of movies. Yeah, that's what uh, oh, that's people use it as shorthand so that you understand characters get assassinated, lore is ruined, and the franchise is disrespected. That's the quick way of... It's TLJ. It's the TLJ equivalent. 
Um, so, you know, thinking about it, maybe. Maybe we could do something. Grab a bunch of people who uh, we met around that time, and then just have a little chat about how everything went. Um, this is really early for Fringmeister and Shadmington. It's 4 a.m. in QLD. Also, Heil Ragla. Hello! Uh, yeah, it's early. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Digimon of the day is Raidramon. Raidramon, let me take a look. Raidramon. That looks stupid. Here, let me. That's lot. That's like almost all Digimon. But let me post it here. One second. Oop. So, yeah, he's a little bit um, child's drawing-y to me. That's a lot of... I Honestly, I think that's a lot of Digimon. They just look stupid. They look like children drew them. It's not even about the... like. It's, it's just most of the idea, the quality right? It's the art. It's the style. It's very busy, it's the design. I think. Yeah, the colors and just... It's like shit just got tacked on. But, because uh, he... He evokes a sense of the legendary uh, dogs from Pokemon to me, but I feel like they had a better, better look to them. They had a, like a each one of them had like a sort of. They weren't clashing with themselves. It's kind of like the 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 birds. They yeah. They weren't just shit everywhere, all all over all over the place. There was some element of oh, we're going for like a design element or some sort of aesthetic here. I think it's that um, each of the legendary Pokemon has some clear readable aspect of them that is, like, never obscured. Yeah. Like, the birds are very obviously birds, the dogs are very obviously dogs. Um, like, there's there's something that, like, helps you Just like understand what they are. Intended. And it was the same with Grudon and Kyogre, right? Like, one of them is very easily readable as, like, a marine animal. The other one kind of comes across as, like, a, a rock T-Rex. There's like a, a lot of the Pokemon, I, I believe, could be actual animals, like especially slightly fantastical animals, but real. You look at then stuff again. like Beedrill and Parasect and stuff like that, and like, oh yeah, that that's a bug. That's yeah. a, the that's longer a bug. they go on, though. Admittedly, the longer oh, yeah. they go on, the more uh, difficult it becomes. I think for them to look at them, it's like, oh yeah, such great yeah. design. That's the water yeah. one. That's the fire one. That's the electric one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, what it, like, Digimon, because I didn't know much about Digimon, but with all these Digimon requests, I am uh, appreciating Pokemon's designs more. Yeah, I've felt I can that see way. why Pokemon is the one that succeeded Digimon. over Digimon. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters, it's just, like, just anything. I you just don't know much about there. Yu-Gi-Oh! at all, really. Uh, the 700 mil is inaccurate, it's barely at 500. Oh, we're talking about Thor? Really? For Thor's uh, revenue? I really? thought it was 630 million. Well, I can go ahead and double check. Yeah, let's right just now. get a. What's the updated. Oh, and Thunder box office. So it looks like. Um, Thor 11 Thunder. Oh, some of the headlines that just pop up. Nope drops 58%. Top I'm Gun Maverick to drops video. one. Top uh Top Gun has uh topped one point three billion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Top uh, uh so Thor Love and Thunder, six hundred and sixty five million. Uh six, yeah, global. What should we expect it to top out at? I think the estimation now is seven hundred million, which is lower than Ragnarok. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, like, that, I, there's no way that happened with that. The whole, like, bigger opening weekend thing, like, everybody assumes Doesn't that's indicative of, um, yeah, a long-term sort of result, Top but it's Gun just not. Had long Let alone term people going to watch it. Well, it seems like, yeah, because Top Gun has had very slow and steady, like, decline in, you know, week on week. I think it had one of the lowest week on week drops for, like, a big blockbuster in a long time. And so it's I had like someone the other day say, man, I saw Top Gun, it was amazing. And that was just a couple days ago. Word of math, it's it helped that film a lot. Yeah. 
And people it's like DC League of it. Super Pets got twenty three million on its opening. Oh yeah, weekend. that one's not. That's yeah, that's, that's not good. <laughs> that film cost ninety million dollars, and that's part what? of the. Uh, uh, as Dwayne Johnson himself said, the Super Pets universe, along with the Black Adam DC universe. <laughs> I don't know what I meant to make of that. I just assumed it was going to be just like a, uh, a movie for the family to go and watch. And look, it's superheroes, but pets. And it's just like yeah, a nice safe... Is, you got to turn it into a big franchise. Though at this point, you got to wonder if like... I wonder if this is like legitimately going to be the end for like the DCU and they're starting over again. <laughs> the, the tipping point was the DC League of Super Pets. Well, maybe in part, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Damn you, crypto! <laughs> um... Bitch and Adam will be streaming. That is that is a that is a super chat that Adam sent. I, I don't know if we asked a question regarding it or something, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Bitch and Adam streaming. They are streaming every. Well, oh, this, is, nice. this was sent not right now. I mean, I mean, this was when this was sent. Presumably, I don't even know. This is will be streaming. They are they are a Sunday and Tuesday show. I think. Yes, Sunday and Tuesday. Uh. My weird path through EFAP. First saw the recent ones with Dev, and then all the EFAP movies, then Batwoman, then a few key meme faps. Finally watching from the beginning up to episode 54. Bizarre ride. I can see that being the way that anyone gets into it. Like, as a guest, they're like, oh, I like you. And then they're like, oh, this, this format's pretty, pretty, pretty strange. Maybe they've done some other stuff. I think EFAP movies is the easiest way to probably get into it, to be honest. Yeah. Especially oh, someone's Batman. talking about the new show. Who are these guys? They're they got they got a nice thumbnail and little icons <laughs> and oh look at that. Oh hey, oh, I wow. hate all things. I wonder if anyone else they're does. Not just Ooh, consuming Eva. shit. Fuck no. Uh, they're they're very critical of things. That must that's kind of refreshing. Well, it is crazy because uh, we're in spheres that are very critical of these films. I would say, but man, outside of our spheres, there are there are industries worth of people just saying. Oh my god, did you see the new Thor movie? Oh, it was so cool. It was so amazing. This is the best Thor movie since the last Thor movie. 99 Easter eggs you didn't notice in Thor. Every once in a while in my recommendeds, I see just some smaller channel that I've never heard of doing one of those watches or reacts or talks about movie things and... I'm tempted to click on them because I don't generally watch other people talk about movies when we're not covering them on EFAP. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. what do they have to say? What do, What does this person have to think? I know what I think, but what What do they have to say? This person, who knows? Um, Christian was a fine guest. Adam was behaving like a jerk. I feel like I'm seeing the word jerk more recently. Is something going on? Is it getting more popular again? Bring back jerks. It's like the. It's possibly the lowest tier of insult I think there is. Like, is there anything less yeah. offensive but still an insult? It's like, you. You. Meanie? Yeah, meanie is probably the tier below, actually, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't even know what's beneath meanie. Like, he's being. It's like what a child would say it, you know? Like, he's a meanie. I, th I or think a meanie that's. head? A meanie head almost like takes it down by adding head. I was about to say, yeah, somehow meanie head is, is less offensive than meanie. Uh... Like if you called someone a shit, or if you called them a shit head. I almost feel like head is a little bit of a, like a little padding. Poo poo head. Somehow I feel like poo poo head's more offensive than meanie. Poo poo head? I feel like it too. I have been offended. Because poop, and you know, it's kind of, it's not tasteful, right? But being mean, it's fine, you know, you can say that. Someone suggested brute. Could that be one of the lower tier brute. insults? Uh, I it's the, not general. The thing with brute for me is that there are times where that could be applicable. Meanwhile, when are you ever going to call someone a meanie? <laughs> Unless you're a child. Like, he's going to... You can brute for it. Like, I could see... I could see um, maybe in football or something like that, commentators watching the sports saying, oh, there's Johnson, number 69. Look at him. What a brute as he's plowing through other players mm -hmm. and or something like that. Um, and it's used to almost compliment his just sheer strength. Um, and heft, um, 
Dingus and Doo Doo Head. Yeah, Dingus. Dingus almost has like a phallic connotation. Like you, Dingus. True, true. I'm not sure though. Or calling someone a knob. That's that can be really funny and effective. I think. Um, but meanie, oh, I don't, funny. I don't know when we're ever gonna be able to use meanie effectively. We'll have to figure it out. We'll find a way. Dork, yeah, dork is similar. The meanie, dork. Uh, sorry, yeah, to dork mean, is down jerk. there. Dork and jerk, they're in the same tier, I think. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What about the the trio or not trio? The 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 nerd and geek. Those You're are almost nerd. not even insults anymore. Yeah, I, I think, think people. So Happily call themselves those at this point. There's a guy on YouTube called like Nerd Rotic. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. He, he's put nerd nope. in his name. It's fucking nuts. Ew. Crazy. In Fallen Order, there's star destroyers orbiting the planet above the Inquisitor base. It's a good thing they weren't there in the show. Well, they um remember there was a star destroyer above the planet that Obi Wan escaped with those people, but. It cuts to the next episode and they're just chasing them, as opposed to they would have just shot the fuck out of them as they were coming up from the planet. Oh well. Writing, what is that? Loving how good Korea is doing in contemporary media, no politics or diversity checklists to meet, although I find it hard to relate to the characters because no one is white. That's a joke, by the way. It's good that you put... you, you Because... Text, guys. I need kappa faces slash s's and brackets saying that's a joke. That this is the way to do it, because otherwise I'd be like, "Wow." Uh, yeah, I um, I've been uh, I'm barely able to like consume lots and lots of Western media, let alone uh, foreign types, because it's it's harder even like than to be. Like Gunsmoke in Bonanza, Western See, media. I haven't even seen Gunsmoke. I am oh ah, oh. I should be punished. But, I haven't uh, really either. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I just know it's one of the greatest shows of all time. Made it to like 20 seasons. Uh, this was like adding special effects to B-roll and calling it a film. Since a while back, I only started watching Disney stuff on a ship carrying a black flag, wink. I watch it for EFAP, not for joy. <laughs> Maybe that could be counted as watching it for joy. Um, jo I mean, Jolly Roger. That's like, you know, I mean, I love the things I do. Um, yeah, it seems like that's more and more common as time goes on, as people uh, are watching the, the, the MCU or not watching it at all just because they're more so interested in whatever we end up having chats about related to it, which is fine with me because we're mm -hmm. hoping to just talk about storytelling and shit, isn't it? I love talking about storytelling and that other thing. Yeah. I forgot everything that happened last week. Can we get a real quick recap? Also, check out the Sitch and Adam show number 200. I was there for that. I could not make it because of a prior engagement. I, else I would have been there. I wasn't invited. Oh, yeah, I just... <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, they are cruel in their lack of invites, perhaps. Yeah, I, I, don't know what, I don't know if it's a problem with plague doctors or... People with a green plague. They probably mark. just invited so many people. It was just yeah, no, I didn't. yeah, okay, yeah, no, totally yeah. green people don't yeah. get priority. That's fine. Yeah, they can make that decision. Um, but yeah, because I just remembered continuity wise, or, or what happened. This I that was the stream that happened right after these super chats came in. I think that makes sense. I wonder what cancer patients felt about them taking the piss out of cancer like that. Why is it Jane hasn't lost her hair, has no wig? I just think they they, they wanted Natalie Portman to have her hair, I guess. Uh, she wasn't willing to get rid of it, or they weren't willing to do anything otherwise. Um, the, other, that would be my guess. the other aspect, I guess, is the whole... Uh, I'm sure there are cancer patients who can happily tell and take jokes related to cancer. I just don't know that it was very well executed in that film at all. Kind of just awkward. I don't think so. I found it really odd when I saw it. I was like, really? That's yeah. kind of like what I thought. Not because it was like upsetting me personally, but just because it's like, really? You're actually going to make that joke? Wow. All right. You can do it, but I don't know. I, yeah. just, I think when he's rushing, he can really fuck up his approach with the... Well, it's, it's you know, joke auditing. You're, you're trying to figure out like, 
what you've you know whether this joke is working or if it needs to be amended or edited or tweaked just to uh improve it a little bit man you could even say it about that film where that opening scene where gore's daughter's dying just be like like always a joke i don't understand isn't it better to put a joke in you always do that come on i assume that a, a dying child is just hilarious in and of itself so you wouldn't need to add a joke that's what i'd be waiting to prompt from him where he would be like well no it'd be inappropriate here and i'd be like would it be is that right well have you seen the rest of your movie today's animal of the day is the the putu bird hmm the putu bird yo take a look T -O -O. oh jesus christ um, let me get you a picture here. Yeah, I think that's a fair reaction. He's a little bit creepy looking, isn't he? Oh, that's the image you got? I Oh yeah, there are some of those. Are you seeing the other one? It's, I don't even know if this is real now. They're all strange. Because you also get these boys. Yeah. Check him There's out. the common... Uh, That's creepy as shit. They're... Yeah, it's like a child tried to draw something cute. Yeah. So it's horrifying. He feels like he'd pop up in Return to Oz. He feels like he'd be perfect for that movie. <laughs> yeah, like he's a really fucked up puppet. <laughs> I like that. Lol, is that real? I, that's, my, that's my question. I was like, is this... I think he's real, yeah. That's great. <laughs> it looks like a it looks like a like a cartoon. <laughs> he also has like a a, a goofsta name, the Putu bit. <laughs> uh please read Pokedex entries for Hatter Hatterene, Hatterene. Okay. Um Ye Oldie Bulbapedia is from I guess he it made its appearance in Sword and Shield. It emits psychic power strong enough to cause headaches as a deterrent to the approach of others. Uh oh jeez. It, so that's the sword entry. The shield entry is, if you're too loud around it, you risk being torn apart by the claws on its tentacles. This Pokemon is also known as the Forest Witch. Well, there's a um, lot of those at this point. So there's, um... the There's a gig... Uh, never mind. It's, it's like it's a, a different kind of type. Yeah, that's pretty... Because I look at it and I'm like, oh, it doesn't look that. <sighs> yeah, we're we're getting into the age of it just doesn't seem like a. It's it just looks oh, it saved a small image. Let me click on it. Maybe it'll bring it up. Yeah, let me copy and paste this bigger version. I'm like, oh, you don't seem like you're deadly. He was like, no, it'll fucking claw you apart. I'm I'm like, oh, kill I kill you. I wouldn't have guessed that. I think it's it. It seems a bit. I don't know. I don't like this design. It seems mm. a bit too anthropomorphic. I think. Well, yeah, she looks like she's Pokemon Elden Ring or something. Kind of. Uh, light up up. Out of context, EFAP. No, Ganondorf. Please don't tickle my bum bum. Yeah, I could see the I could see that being said. Mm -hmm. Surprise me at all. I haven't seen this movie and don't intend to. Watching all of you thinking about it seems much more worth my time and money. Or talking about it. Well, I guess both. But um, yeah. I didn't enjoy watching it. I will tell you that. It's um, not I a think, fun movie. I think what I ended up saying was that it felt like the most transactional experience I've ever had with a film, where I was just like. Please provide references so I can discuss your ideas. Uh, I wasn't having an entertainment experience with it at all. Which sucks, no. because Ragnarok was entirely that. I was just fucking laughing throughout the whole thing, pretty much. Absolutely. I was very keen on Ragnarok. 
Uh, hey, alpha males, who's the worst MCU writer and what's the worst MCU script in your opinion? Have a nice day. Love y'all. Multiverse Madness. Yeah, Multiverse Madness. I think we're all pretty convinced it's uh, it's a clear winner on this one, which is a surprise, right? Because you'd be like, well, Taika, right? And it's like, no, I don't think... No. I think it's clear loss no. uh, to, to Multiverse yeah. Madness. Loki is worse than uh, Thor, probably. It's, it's Loki and Multiverse, guys. Yep, which... those are the bottom tier. They they sit in a, a very special place together. He does all the stuff you'd expect in terms of all the things we complain about. This president and all the stuff we complain about pretty much, but... I think some of the things I really find fascinating about him is that uh, he has the absolute worst answers for writing problems that you could ever have. Like, if they were in a classroom, that kid should be sent to the naughty corner sort of shit, where it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's the same thing I was asking other people on different streams, where it's like, how do you solve a writing problem? of Letting the audience know and the characters know about something that happened in a character's history. It's like, oh, there's just so many ways you can do that. I think the easiest and fastest way to try and get this done is that you prompt them to say something that regards it, then there's a conversation, and that's that's how it's known. And then Michael Waldron's just like, well, there could just be a memory store. Like, Michael, why would there be a memory store? That's insane. And he's just like, well, no, but it's like, the, it's like a different reality. It's not like ours. It's like, yeah, but this is a civilization. There are so many things that are implied by a memory store that... Couldn't possibly be coherent. And then you have to have oh, the sorry. fact that it's just an accident that they happen to roll by and hit it. And then it has to be that specific memory? Really? Yeah, really important, relevant memories for the plot. And also, you have a memory store, and there's no exploration of the nature of memories and how people can, like, twist and warp their own memories so that they're, like, a false representation of what actually happened and what you can pull from that, whether they frame it more positively or negatively. Even having Jinx thinking about by, and she'll be like, it'll, you'll see these little scratchy drawings. The flash with the scratches on the face. Yeah. It's just how she, fun like, God, Arcane was made by artists, okay? <laughs> like yeah. this, meanwhile, this thing was just crapped out in the middle of trying to film right. it. We're trying it's to so figure insanely it out as we lazy. Go. Not fair. Uh,. And it's not the only example. Michael Waldron does a bunch of these throughout. And like, like the cla I don't know that there'll ever be a better example of how to misunderstand how characters work than Loki uh, watching his own development. Oh, yeah. Him. yeah. It might be the most insulting uh, thing I've ever seen in terms of how a character would develop. He watched himself develop. It's like, that doesn't... That's... Ugh. That is such a blatant misunderstanding of how anything works. And we should expect a Star Wars movie from this man. He's gonna eclipse Ryan Johnson, isn't he? <laughs> Ryan will be oh, like, boy. you thought I was bad. Do you, do you think it might be worthwhile to rewatch the episode of Rick and Morty he wrote? Which one was it again? The toilet seat it one. It was the toilet one, yeah. I, all I remember is that you and I were not keen on that episode. We were like, hmm. We certainly thought it was weaker than, uh, than the average Rick and Morty episode. I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, maybe if you want to. I, I'd be curious to see if it's worse than we thought because of. Uh, I think that what didn't help season five, Rick and Morty, now is that uh, the veneer was damaged and then actually just got removed of us having a lot more good faith for the show. To try and I think so. wait for things to make more sense, wait for things to be contextualized in better ways instead of just being like, you know what, that, that was just shit. Well, yeah, because it, it, it was. Um... It, it took a little while with the uh that that's um the episode four the one with the uh sperm, I think that one we were just sitting there like so what what's um where are we going like what's the joke here like what are we and then by the end it's like oh it was just yeah it was what it was on its face the whole time mm -hmm. it was just worthless dude that was so bad that episode is terrible. Like, everybody recognizes it as being terrible as well. It's, like, the lowest rated one. Um, Wait, that's the lowest rated one? I think it is. That one is. Yeah. I well, can understand why. Because even the later ones that I think are, like, may well be worse, I don't think that they're as transparently bad on their face. Hmm. Let me double check IMDb. Yeah, because I'd be curious. I, I think 
So I've seen more sentiment against season five than I ever saw from any other season, but I don't know how the ratings right. reflect it. I think uh, I I would certainly say that season five it seems to have. Uh, let me, let's take a look. Um, so yeah, season five, um, the the opening, the one with the parallel timelines, has a nine, and then the decoys one is an eight point seven. Uh, and then the uh, the Planetina one is seven point eight, and then the Sperm one is five point seven. Um, and Bad. then the 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 one where it was pleasure and pain that's a seven. The uh, that's more the, than the one with no, yes, and then the Thanksgiving one is a seven, which is more than it deserves to. Yeah, and then the uh, I think it was the um the the like what what's like what what are those Japanese shows where like. The all the robots assemble like Voltron or something. That one. Oh, Genshin one, Impact uh, is or my yeah, six point four. That one. So that one didn't have as great a reputation. We didn't like that one either. I, I remember all these these episodes. We were just like, oh, yeah. you've got your ideas, but what is wrong with your execution? What is going on? And the uh, the bird person one, the like the one where we saw more of Rick's backstory is an eight point two. And then the Crows one was an 8.3, and then the finale was a 9.4. <laughs> yeah, for the same reason that the, the episode was aware. It gave people backstory that they've been waiting for. Uh, probably good enough to get it a pass. I think so, but it's just like, yeah. So you can even see in that list, it's like, yeah, damn, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't line up very well compared to when you go through... Yeah, and season, season uh, 4 has got a lot more favorable... And then I think season three will probably be the same thing as you look at it. Yeah, season three is a lot more favorable. <laughs> and then I guess by the time you go back to season one and two, that's where it's like universally liked. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Season three was probably the turning point, even though I do really like season three. I think th there was a change in the tone and the direction that it was going. I'm realizing from chat's reaction that I have no idea what Genshin Impact is. Is it oh, okay? Game? I, I'm looking at pictures of it now. That is not what I had in my head at all. So <laughs> that's, that's well, yeah, because I, I don't even know I, why I went because like it's like Power Rangers, right? Was what I was actually. You could think with, like, the, Genshin Impact is a name. You could assume that's about robots, right? Or robot suits. Uh, that's, uh, that's, I, I guess I, I just. Uh, I don't know what Genshin Impact is. So I said you could just, assume. Yeah. Genshin sounds um, like a, a brand of robotic suits to me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I I guess Voltron because it's Tron. It's like yeah. It's oh yeah, pretty, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Gundam, yeah. I guess it could be. You could that could be. I it. think it is Gundam, right? Or like. I guess that would make sense. That's the thing. Now I'm now I'm like, wait, I should be careful. I could be I could be talking about something that's completely not the thing. I'll confuse Gundam. everyone. I, I, I don't know anything about Gundams like at all, but I, I think like the the like the I was about to say helmets, but I guess it's just like the head. They have a cool design. Yeah, um which I am vaguely familiar with because the how many times I've seen uh it's a Gundam's avatar. <laughs> like that's why I know that. Yeah, you just pull up these pictures like these are cool looking robots. Old man Muller. I mean just I'd say it's fair to say Boomer on that one. <laughs> uh, I like, by the way, all of that came from someone asking who's the worst MCU writer. Just like, yeah, it's Michael Waldron. <laughs> it's not even co like because who else would be competition? It's like we don't even know other writers as well as him at this point because of the fact that it was so. Incredibly impressive that he, the, the, the whoever wrote Loki and whoever wrote Multiverse Madness, they are a special writer. And it's like, turns out it was the same guy. It's like, oh. It explains so much, but it also means that, like, I just don't know. I, something that I've noticed, and I've said this a few times lately, is, um, there are just these weird quotes from a lot of, like, the people who are involved creatively in Marvel projects that make me wonder how they view storytelling. Like, the fact that John Favreau said you can't kill Iron Man because that would upset people, like, blows my fucking mind. I can't believe that that's something that, like, somebody who's, like, a professional writer would say. You know, like, what are your priorities? Found something or, like, out a um, businessman trying to sell a product, like, I would say. 
a conversation that apparently happened when um when you know like how they do the close-ups on the eyes when when uh like dr strange meets alternate mordo apparently like for some reason kevin feige just didn't like that for some reason and that was like a fight that they had over like whether to include it or not i just don't really? understand i think uh, so oh, not like a fight but he didn't want it but no I, I get what you mean i i just uh, i feel like if you i were there I mean? like, i'd be like guys is this the thing we need to spend time on figuring out compared to like all the other the shit. Massive gaping plot holes. Well, and, and then, and then the fact that, that in order to figure out, it's like, yeah, we've got Black Bolt, but how does Wanda defeat him? And apparently Sam Raimi said, like, if Wanda says, like, what mouth? And that was like, ah, oh, we got it. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I find well, it. So and then Michael Oldham <laughs> saying, well, I wanted to use Wanda as a villain, so now she is. It's like, ah, right. So we didn't really think about whether it, you know, makes any sense at all. Like, whether that's where that character is at the moment. You wanted it, so you did it. And you again, really I, would, I would be such a villain or not. I'd be such a stick in the mud to these people because I'd just be like, so she can change your biology at a whim, uh, uh, at a distance, right? Like that. This is a power you you're admitting. Like, can Why she do that to your organs? Know. Can she just mash your brain? Yeah, exactly. And I know that they would she be like, whatever. dude, what are you? Why are you? Why are you asking these questions? I should be like, to which, to which <laughs> it's like that's your job. Your job is to answer these questions. Like in an ideal, I think. Um, I think a good way to think about writing a story would be that you don't need to present all the answers but you should have them like um you, you should be some able interesting to... questions for a start well i i guess what i'm getting at is let's say that you have like a fantasy world and all that matters is a certain amount of information to it but somebody may have a question or two about something else and you should be able to provide the answer for that even if you don't need to have that answer in the story like in kind of the same way that you think about, I guess it's Hemingway's like iceberg thing, right? You are uh, you only explain so much, but ah uh, no, it's probably not comparable because the point of that is you only explain so much because the audience can infer uh, a lot more, like underneath, just logically. It would be which, more which so that um is being you used should have like as a weapon at this point the inference because like, that's that's. Because I, I would be like, our inference would have to conclude that she has the power to manipulate biology. And and if someone was like, whoa, no, why wouldn't you just assume that she can only do this to Black Bolt here and now in this moment? And I'd be like, well, because that doesn't make any sense. Why would it be that way? Exactly. Yeah, the, the point of the inference is you don't need to explain everything. If you've done a good enough job in your writing, people will be able to logically infer a lot of things about characters or what's happening. Yeah. Um, as opposed to just don't... You, you should... Yeah, like, I think, that, especially if you're writing speculative fiction, you should be prepared to answer these questions. Um, ideally, the questions are answered or can be inferred based on what you've written. Um, I, I just think that it's it's not good if, like, it, it's, it's not a good sign if someone asks you a question, you go, oh, shit, I didn't think of that. It's like, oh, damn, man, like, if you didn't think of that, you know, like, fuck, <laughs> what else might you have missed um, while you were writing it? It just makes sense to me that you should have a really comprehensive understanding of your own story, even if a lot of what you understand doesn't come through, like, doesn't need to be part of the story. Like, that, that, you, that you know the answers, even if you don't give them to, to the viewer. Because if you know the answers, the answers will inform the writing, if you get what I mean. Like, yeah. if you understand where a certain place is, I guess this is going more broad, but, like, if you understand fully a character's backstory and you know it down pat, while you're writing something, that will just seep in, and, like, that will be there for people to latch onto and, and sort of pull from it, as opposed to not thinking about it at all, where the, that substance can be lost, or you can accidentally write stuff that ends up being contradictory. Well, someone just said in, in chat, like, I think we had a conversation about a couple of these in Arcane, but just, like, why did Vi scream after she beat Savika in a fight? They don't tell you yeah. why. They show it, and but then they, they move on. they know why. They know why, for they sure, and they hope why. that you yeah. know why. Um, and in the same vein, you know, th that, see, that would be an example where I think the writers uh, are on point. Then there are times where the writers are not on point, however they can benefit from this. Like, they show us the portals, and we're like, ooh, there are a lot of things you can do with that. However, if I don't see you chop off people's limbs, then maybe I can just assume that whenever a portal tries to close around a person, it will, it'll just doesn't error work. out, it doesn't work, yeah. And then you show me but that's not they... the case, and it's like, well, now we're fucked. <laughs> like... Yeah, that was, it's, it's a good joke, but it's such a mistake.
it's not worth it. Like, that one single chopping off the hand, that's such a great example of, like, the ripple effects of, um... Because everything that's in a story is, like, it, it, it has a bearing on what comes before and what comes after. Um, the extent to which it does so varies, but, like, it's all interconnected. And so even the seemingly most insignificant thing can be really impactful. It's why it's important to be very thoughtful when making these yeah. sorts of decisions about changing a story or adding new things. It's like, well, I don't... You, you don't want to think just about how do I solve the problem before me right now with my story. You need to also think about what implications it might have. I get the impression that the the process of like writing these Marvel movies turns into there's an immediate problem. Oh yeah, I guess that moves the plot forward. We're good. It's it doesn't go beyond that in terms of solving problems narratively, and then present you know consequently creating all new problems. Or maybe it's more just the standard. Because what is it? Michael Waldron's like, oh yeah, we're at the second act, and like I had no idea what to do or something, and so he probably just followed all the standard yeah. beats that. You to do without thinking about how much it is coherent with the story that he's trying to write which is insane um i yeah i even wonder like you do go home and sleep uh between filming days and i just i'm even at the point where i'm like surely when you get home you have food and you're like i might go to sleep it's like can i take an extra hour to write out at least another few bits, few bobs, maybe a broad outline of what i'm doing here talk to a friend about like bouncing ideas or anything to get yourself ahead of filming for christ's sake you know what i mean mm -hmm. or even just sit down with one of the themes that you think you want to do and just like really rigorously examine it because you know i i think they think that there are themes in that film but i mean they keep contradicting themselves and you you wonder if you just sit there it's like right so beyond the original idea that you had for your theme did you sit down and rigorously test that theme like, what are, what are the arguments against this point? What are the things in the film that contradict this point? How do I best facilitate this theme with the scenes that I guess I still have left to film? <laughs> like, I don't know. Or was it just the original idea? Ah, that's good. Yeah, I got it. Great. Good. <laughs> As Mark Webb would say. Someone asked, do I regret my video on Infinity War? Presumably because we just talked about that... Uh mistake they made there's a lot of mistakes they make in infinity war and i would have thought infinity war is mixed bag we yeah we talked about it but like my video uh -huh. was more so uh praising what i think works in it i have i don't talk about what i think doesn't work in that video um, a lot of things do work yeah and i uh i would hope that um what i pointed out as being strong continuity remains that way but there's a chance i um i'd be like oh shit i didn't think about blah 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 doing blah 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 there's like um I saw one of the ones being discussed recently was how it's it's actually bizarre that Doctor Strange just forgets his portal when he's asking Tony to take them back to Earth. Like, yeah, it's, that's really strange. Like, I, I don't know why he would. It's it's like how would they not have thought of that when they were filming it? Like, like any of them. Really, well, maybe odd. they did. They were like, ah, oh, fuck it. Nah, we want to be on Titan. We put we previous. The thing Titan, is that they so had quote-unquote reasoning to go to they titan did. but the i think that the we needed it so that it's take a while to go back to earth and draw thanos there or take a while to go to titan and set up our trap there so the portal kind of takes that away because it's like we can have instant access back to earth and back to titan um and so there's that that fucks with that but it's like yeah but you you can't just forget that doctor strange has a literal universe traveling portal like you just can't do that and that's the thing the you watch doctor strange the second they introduce that it's like fuck me that's quite powerful and, and this is where we're at like it's causing problems constantly and to be fair i think that uh you you as a writer can deal with it a lot better than uh the attempts that have been made so far of just ignoring it exists yeah um, but in, in the same vein that we were talking about the uh, the little zappy paralyzing power that, that Obadiah Stane has, the second you show that portal shit, it's like, oof. No, uh -oh, we've established that we've, we've made rules. This is a thing. This is a move you can make with your little chess pieces. And when you have power like that, first thing you're going to want to do is make it really difficult for people to be able to pull uh, off. Some, some limiter. Someone in chat has said, I thought Doctor Strange said the portal can't reach Earth, but it screws with Endgame. It's like, yeah, exactly. Because in Endgame, they, like, portal from all over, they portal from Titan. 
So Wait. that's and they they wrote both films. So he says that in Infinity War. I don't remember if he says that in Infinity War. I, can't I don't remember. remember that at all. But I also want to. I mean, he opens that's portals on Titan. Work, are we are we saying there's a length limit on the portals? Is that the idea? I don't see how that could be the case, though, given Endgame, and also because no, they yeah. said that they allow you to travel the multiverse in Doctor Strange 1. So, that was actually going to be my reference, yeah. Yeah. Because if you can travel the multiverse, that feels more significant than traveling within a universe in terms of yeah. distance. But then we yeah, forgot about that like... line when we wrote a direct sequel to that film. And yet again, like, uh, God, any rule like that, it makes you wonder. It's like, I guess, like, like if someone's, for example, like he said, there's a, there's a meter limit on the portals. Uh, I'd just be like, why? I guess, like, for sure, why? A mile limit? Like, why? And even still, you'd, you'd be like, how bizarre in terms it's of... It's like, uh, yeah, the more powerful you are, the further it can be or something like that. It doesn't maybe. have to be specific. Uh... Yeah, um, it can't be a magic horse. What real animal would you ride into battle? Oh, so like, what would you uh, want to ride into battle? Is a bit discounting. It can't be oh, a magic horse. yeah, I guess they're saying that because of Thor: Love and Thunder. So, a um, magic animal. I would probably want something that can like, probably a dragon. Right? Dragons seem like a really good choice. They do. There's many like varieties that. of dragons. Some are smaller and more bulky. Some are more like uh, Eastern dragons are a bit more long. Well, it's like T Rex and chat. I like that. Isn't that essentially what you do with fly. a dragon? Is a, is a dinosaur that can fly? Like I, 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 I yeah, say that. Could breathe fire. Yeah, some of them can breathe. I was like, gonna say ice it's and... it's comboing up a couple of things at once. So Griffin, I like that as an answer. Yeah, Griffin's, Griffin's not cool. bad. I worry if they're not resilient because like the scales of the dragon, you know. But Griffin's yeah. a pretty good choice. I think flight is just anything that lets you fly is a really important thing that you can have. Just a useful tool to be able to get around, get in and out of battle, to get, you know, to carry people quickly if you need to help someone out. In Ghidorah. Yeah. I have three people riding him. <laughs> they want to go in a different direction. So the follow-up was uh, bringing in Shad. Would it be an emu melting in the heat, but you guys bring joy? Oh, that's nice. Oh, thanks. Um, riding an emu, though. I, I don't know. I think they do I that? Want... Like a child no, or a no, midget, maybe? No, I don't think so. Um, I think you'd probably... It would not be easy for an emu to carry the weight of an adult. <laughs> like, to... Same with a kangaroo. That could be like um, a hobbit. That's what the hobbits would use. They'd use like emus, like could, chocobos could, from Final Fantasy. It'd be cool if we could, if those mega marsupials that would have lived in Australia like uh, 60 or 70,000 years ago, he probably could have uh, jumped on one of those and gone for a ride. Megafauna is really cool. It's it's kind of lame that we never, wow, well, we never really got to see them. Oh, I guess it's cool that we at least know that they existed. That's neat. It's probably also cool that we avoided some of the horrific monstrosities that used to also well, exist well, on this planet as well. Well, it's not that we avoided them. I'm pretty sure early humans wiped them out. No, we're talking millions and millions and millions. Oh, and millions yeah, yeah, We're right, talking sure. like the, yeah. the, the real scary terror shit. The bugs as yeah. big as houses and crap like that. <laughs> not a fun time. Yeah. All the, yeah, the stuff that... Oof. Not even talking dinosaurs. Just like the legit creepy Skull Island oh, shit. No, dinosaurs are cool. Like, dinosaurs you know, are I cool. Yeah, nobody wants to see a giant around. spider. That's terrifying. Uh. I love that, because like, you see a T-Rex, and you're like, well, you're going to bite me, and I'm going to die. With the spider, you're like, what are you going to do? Something horrifying, exactly. like you string yeah, me yeah, up, and then... Bugs, bugs are just a... A sort of the domain hell of bugs. creature. Bugs are a hell world. Like it is a hell world. world. It's a, the world it's of a, bugs is a hell world. It's a nightmare it's a, universe full of pain and misery is. and suffering. Yeah. What would you? You don't live. What would you opt to that? die from? Uh, ants or a polar bear? Uh, polar bear. I don't know, man. I actually like, think this is really don't... difficult because 
Polar bears don't eat, don't kill you and then eat you. They just eat you while you're alive. The thing is, the ants are definitely I still think doing that. that. The That's yeah, true. I imagine it can incidentally probably easily kill you yeah, exactly. in that process. Yeah. But ants are to, just like you have to take the risk that. with the polar bears and like you have to hope the polar bear wipes you out quick. Yeah, Which it's it easy well. to imagine that happening, yeah, with a polar bear. But ants because is the like, polar they bear could, uh, if the polar bear like hits an artery, that's pretty much yeah. it for you. If you're knocked out, yeah. You, it, you if it just hits quick. you in the head, it could just knock you out, and you won't even feel the things that happen afterwards. Welcome to as E-Pack. opposed to well, yeah, like someone said, I keep punching it. Someone said I could kill the ants way easier than the polar bear. It's like this is not a scenario no, where you get to do that. <laughs> yeah, this is no. We're talking, this is not we're a scenario where you survive. Crystal skull moment. All right, this is you've been paralyzed by Obadiah Ob Ob Stane's old device. You have paralytic abasia. Yeah. And uh, oh god, is it, yeah, this I is a scenario where you die. Yeah, I'll take the polar bear. I think I would. Yeah, I think the polar bear is the one you're doing. Yeah, it's not a great choice. Though. No. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like everyone's agreed to. It's just like, yeah, I'll go with the polar bear. Ants dismember you while you're still alive. Yeah, I mean, these ants, any ants, they're going to have to eat you while you're alive because they're not going to be able to kill you that fast. Yeah. Uh, next one says, Impotent City. True. Oh. This one's for Jadolf Titler, Seek High Rags. Oh, Seek High. Titler. <laughs> Which franchise has been crushed more? Star Wars, MCU, Terminator, Alien, or Last of Us? Uh, Terminator has been pretty consistently like destroyed. This wow. is this is just about how you set like the, the framing for it's the, like the polar bear question. Yeah, because <laughs> I'd be inclined to go with Terminator as, as well, but then it's like why? And it's like well, because it got annihilated twice, and it's like yeah, but. You know, the MCU, maybe you'd say it hasn't been annihilated yet because you still got Guardians, but like that's still like 95% of its content has been annihilated, you know? Yeah, but weren't the choices Terminator, Alien, and uh, Last of Us, or? And the MCU and Star Wars, did you miss those? Oh, oh I did miss those. Uh, huh. The I Last guess of Us is really funny the... because, like, The Last of Us has had its reputation destroyed pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, it's uh, it's kind of remarkable because the last of us the last remake, of us got polar bared. Well, you look at that YouTube video for the for the remake. It's got a bad like to dislike ratio on the PlayStation upload. They've done permanent which is damage. Be most favorable, yeah. Like everybody kind of just is upset about that series now. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people bitter about it. But and yet they still kind of press on, wanting to turn it into this franchise. It's kind of odd. Well, you know what? They still yeah. think it's got that. It's never with the fucking unequivocally great content that you catch the creators being like, hey, it is selling well. Hey, people do like this. Exactly. When, when do you have, the, like, when is this defensive bullshit coming out for, like, stuff like that? Because it reminds me of the whole, um, hey, fuck you, Empire was received badly when it came out at first as well. It's like, does anyone was ever it? say this about any of the Star Wars films that were well received? Mm -hmm. Like, when fucking Return of the Jedi- no, fuck it, uh, when Force Awakens came out, were people saying, yeah, you like it now, but some stuff ages real bad? No, but it still, it did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nobody- it's such a weird way to frame everything, you're just like, wait till the future. This film is out of time, it's- it's- it's gonna be appreciated one day, I'm sure of it. Ugh. Just like Empire, that was clearly hated when it was first released, like, shut up. Yeah, first off, I don't believe you. Um, well, so what they usually off, pivot to if you say that is like, haha, here is a review where someone said was Empire was day. bad. And it's like, yeah, no, I know there's going to be people who didn't like it. That's not the fucking point. Because what I hear is people saying, well, if Empire was made today, you people would still blah, blah, blah. Which is, of course, wrong. All I remember is references to Empire's release was that it shocked the fucking world, basically. It was, it was like one of the, and it's always the quintessential example of a spoiler. Yes. I don't remember the memes about how everyone hated Empire. I don't I don't know about that. That doesn't sound like a thing that happened. But uh sure. It was totally just as hated as The Last Jedi. Sure, hundred percent. Definitely. Which means, uh how many years do we need before TLJ is considered a masterpiece? I don't know. A few decades maybe. We'll get there. Uh oh yeah, uh I guess I don't know which one I would say is the most crushed of all the IPs. Kind of hard to to say definitively. Um, 
If we go with health in the box office, I guess the MCU is definitely not crushed yet in the same way that Terminator is. Terminator struggles to make like any money now because of how does, shitty these yeah. projects get. Star Wars is doing... Well, we, we haven't seen anything from Star Wars since 2019, so... Movie-wise. Uh, but I'm sure that's gonna change soon enough. It's still unbelievable to me that that's the case. When, when are we expected to get a Star Wars movie now? Is it like 2024? I think so. I think it is. Insane. Like, this five-year gap because of the damage that Ryan did to this franchise. <laughs> like, do you really know which incredible. fucking ripple effect you had? It's most uh, damaging movie to Star Wars, I think, was The Last Jedi. Fuck yeah. Uh, Rise of Skywalker was goofy and shit, but like, it, you know, it's just like dropping a bit of poison in that open wound, the blood is splayed everywhere. It's like, yeah, I guess you're killing it more, but... TLJ made The Rise of Skywalker possible. I think it's interesting to think about how a lot of people went into The Rise of Skywalker knowing it was going to be shit. And for some reason, some people thought that didn't reflect negatively on the film that came before it. Yeah. Like, that we all knew that it was going to be a disaster, that we all knew it was going to be a complete piece of shit. Like, people would say, oh, what a heel turn, and this is the fault of people who didn't like The Last Jedi. It's like, the fact that you knew ahead of time, had a good feeling that this was going to be shit, I think speaks volumes to how incoherent that trilogy was from the very beginning. Like, nobody was surprised that that film sucks. Everybody knew it would. Why would people think that, following what is apparently the most groundbreaking and revolutionary Star Wars film to come out? Why would that just be a normal expectation among even people who apparently like that film, if not a it reflection on that film's quality? It's just and fascinating. Some people are saying, isn't TFA the death of Star Wars? It's like, uh, I think that it, they could have uh, drawn it back. I think yes that... no. You know, in the same way that... Um, Empire turned Star Wars into a franchise, and not in the sense that there's a second one, therefore more than one. I mean in the sense that knocking it out of the park twice, that, that gets you the uh, the go-ahead to just go nuts as a franchise, as opposed to just the one time. Um, even though there are examples of franchises that are basically based on one good movie, as opposed to uh, several. But Star Wars is huge, right? Um, maybe the reverse thing happened there, where it's like, we had a bad one, but it can survive a bad one. But can it survive two bad ones in a row? Um, it's like it goes from being a particular tier to a different tier. Like Star Wars, uh, you know, its reputation was way fucking better uh, after TFA than now. And so, uh, you know, I think I think most people agree it was salvageable. Could have made TLJ that story that wasn't what we got and uh, drawn it back a bit. In the same way that you could probably draw back a lot of the MCU going awry. Um, and we'd seen attempts at doing that before, even in the MCU. I, th I feel like Phase 2 was actually, a, we, we were heading down a bad, bad way. It was going, it was not going good. Um, and then uh, there's, there's elements of Phase 3 that really started to bring it back. And then Phase 3 ended with... Uh, yeah, because Endgame is Phase 3, right? So, yeah, Phase 3 didn't end great. Uh, um, yeah. Either Captain Marvel or Black Panther, which, yeah, still plenty of bad ones in that as well, but I don't know. I'd like to think there is always a way to rescue uh, writing. It's harder as time goes on. You can't talk about Jurassic Park that way. I will continue to maintain The Lost World is still not a good Jurassic Park movie, okay? It's just one. That's the second one? Yeah, it's the one that I think people will have the most assumption. It's like, well, you think that one's good, right? And it's like, mm. Mm, I can remember very little about it. We have to go in our Jurassic Park arc. We do, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I remember liking Jurassic Park 3 more than 2. Which is um, possibly controversial. I can't remember anymore. All I know is that the Jurassic World either. franchise, like, fucking... Everyone kept saying Dominion's worse than Fallen Kingdom. It's just like, Jesus Christ. We'll do that someday. We will. Um... Because Fallen Kingdom was special, but the idea that Dominion's even worse, fucking let's that's, go. I that's that's rough. Because well, uh, the what was it? What what's the one before Dominion? Fallen Kingdom. It is one yeah. of the worst movies I've ever seen. Um, Do you know that? Um, it is awful. I think it was Drinker and uh, another friend of mine. I can't remember who exactly, but they they were like, "You should see Dominion. It's like shockingly bad." And I was like, "All right." Give me something about it that can at least help me understand, like, how could it be worse than Fallen Kingdom? And they're like, well, what do, what do you think Dominion's about from the trailers and the end of Fallen Kingdom? It's like, oh, well, the obvious, it's dinosaurs are all over the earth now. 
So we're going to have stories that relate to that, I suppose. Like, how do we coexist with them, or how do we destroy them, or what happens to certain environments as a result of them. But yeah, you'd, you'd think maybe that that was the story. Um, more so about dealing with a horde of locusts that are attacking the world, and eventually they become fire locusts. What? And that was my reaction. I was like, that's not true. No, not uh, d and D. I'm talking about Jurassic World. What happens in that movie? And, and, and apparently that is... That is what that film's about. That is that is the thrust of the uh, the drama. And I was just like, I can't why? wait to see it. Why can't people make stories anymore? <laughs> What's going? All this shit that I just mentioned about what I thought the movie was about. I don't think that's particularly impressive. But apparently, like that was just too much. That's that's too much. Can't be doing that. We'll instead just uh, we'll go with this this other thing. It's just like what. What are you doing? <laughs> Why did you write this? And yet, uh, that's probably made probably made the kind of money they needed to make, right? I don't know. I do not know how much it made. I assume it's probably a lot. What I do know is that if you've got an itch for dinosaurs, you should probably instead go for the new thing that came out uh, that's like Planet Earth, but for dinosaurs um, with David Attenborough. With CGI dinos and stuff, and it, go it just goes over, I guess... Stuff they used to get up to. I still want to go watch that. I think... I don't know if it's on Amazon or... Uh, maybe it's on Disney? It's probably on Disney, right? Disney Plus. I don't know. I do not know either. But I've heard that's that's pretty good. Um, I still... I realize, though, I still haven't committed to an answer on this, on which is the most crushed franchise. I, uh, I, think, I think I might go with Terminator, um, even though I think a, an argument can be made for basically any of these. I feel like MCU encompasses more and its destruction has been very thorough on like very basal fundamental levels in much terms as, of just everything happening what did I, I think I think fair. I'd go with MCU the word crushed really makes me think that Terminator wins out because of the fact that it's so um oh it, it's it's just so, so like, simple yet they ruined it it's it's it's, it's it's there's a lot of things that's one of them one of them is 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 the fact that like nobody even expects to talk about Terminator these days, it's like gone. Like, and that much damage was done. Uh, you know, like yeah. the MCU is still around, like so is Star Wars. Away. But like, Terminator is just dead. And and it's like, when was the last good thing for that? And it's like, oh well, Terminator Two. It's been a really, really long time. Um, and the newest two iterations were like, lol, fuck Terminator One and Two, get them out of here. And it's like, what? No, what? No, no. Um. And yeah, like, I don't know if they're planning another Terminator movie at some point, but I, I imagine they are getting to the point where they're like, I don't think that's wise in terms of being able to make money, which sucks. Because I don't even want more Terminator stuff. However, I don't like the idea that, uh... This is how it ends? They've destroyed it to this degree, where they're just like, it's a useless franchise even for merchandising or, um, entertainment. It's just like, damn, guys, that was pretty thorough of you. Meanwhile, um, you know, Star Wars and MCU... They can still get releases and everyone will still watch it. Well, someone, um, yeah. someone regarding the money for Dominion, Google says the budget was 185 million and the box office was 949 million. Yeah, there you go. Still going good. So, yeah. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, give it a handful of years and they'll probably fucking do another trilogy for Jurassic, Jurassic Universe or some shit. Space dinosaurs. Thoughts on Soldier Boy in season three of The Boys? I am the only one that Don't can answer this. Don't anything about it. He's uh, he's a he's like uh the first big superhero that existed in the universe. He was uh hated by everybody because he's just a strict asshole. He's just a really horrible person. He would like arbitrarily kill people, uh, say the worst things you could imagine, and only cares about himself. He legit like I don't even know if he has. Uh, feelings that are definitive for, for like uh, other people. There are scenes that imply so, but it can be dropped in the in a second. So I'm not, I'm not sure what I was gathering from him exactly. Uh, he gets betrayed by his team, and uh, they. Well, I I I think they think some of them think he's dead. I can't remember if all of them do, but uh, he's presumed dead. But he's captured by I think Russians, and he's put on ice after experimentation. And then uh, fast forward to season three and the boys uh, 
are searching for something, and they stumble across him and release him by accident. Um, he has super strength. I presume super, like, endurance and healing, but the one that's really weird is he, like, can, uh, he can, like, generate a nuke within himself, and it, like, blows up everything around him, and it will, like, vaporize buildings and kill people, but if you do it to a soup, it will remove their power, no matter what soup, what power. Really, really uh -huh. strange and specific, but they realize that is what they can defeat Homelander with, and that's the thrust of the plotline in uh, Season 3. Uh, isn't he immortal? Uh, he might be. I'm not 100% clear on that from the from the season. Fries the V out of their system, yeah. Uh, somehow, that's a, yeah, that's a great addition to that sure. sentence. <laughs> it's like, it's, that's, that's what it do. I don't know. Um... I wanted a lot more out of the writing. I thought Jensen Ackles was fantastic. I really enjoyed watching him do his stuff, but like he's just not given much. I was so ready to like Soldier Boy, because I was like, alright, this, this seems like it could be cool. But he's just a horrible asshole, um, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I've talked a bit about it, but like Season 3 I thought was shit as well. But it's no surprise, and there's no... There's no passion from me to want to force rags and bring you through it so that we can do like an EFAP on it. The season two just, I just killed any interest I have in it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Hale, I heard there may be a Kong Fap sometime. If so, I recommend you cover the Japanese film King Kong vs. Godzilla 1962 and you can compare it to Godzilla vs. Kong. May the dawn bless you and hi, rags. Hello. That could be interesting. To see uh, the difference in ideals and approaches, because we—I don't even know if we'd end up really liking the 1962 one or not, but I, it would be such a different experience than. Um... Could be super charming, and they might actually have to focus on like our human POV characters and making them, God forbid, likable and interesting. Could be, could be. Or maybe the new stuff is just following in the tradition, and I just want all the humans to die. We'll see. I don't know. And yeah. this the 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 east west difference in making movies. Who I mean, who knows how big that will be? Hey, getting to watch my third most favorite racist sexist podcast as a sanded as a sander deck in seventy three seventy eight degree weather. Also, more to get in the jar. I want to get in the get in the jar. Hmm. I guess he's sanding a, a sanding a deck in, in seventy eight degree weather. You need a you need a parasol at that point, okay? So you got one. Seventy eight centi centi Celsius. What what's what is centigrade? What is uh, that? That's what the C is, right? In the degrees C thing. Uh, if you're asking what yeah, centigrade it's means, Celsius, yeah. right? Like Celsius and centigrade are those the same, or are those two different things? I'd have to Google. Uh, Chat see. says same thing. Okay. Centigrade. I like I like centigrade better. It, it has more centigrade scale. Yeah. I, mean, I like Celsius and centigrade and as words. I think they both sound kind of neat. Yeah. Well, because Celsius is named after Anders Celsius. Well, centigrade. When he invented the centigrade temperature scale, but they renamed it Celsius after him. Oh. So that's kind of neat. Yes. Not many people get to have a temperature scale named after them. Yeah. I mean, there's like three. Well, yeah, because there's Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Um, is data pronounced data or data? Either way, the I think. The name is... I think, it, I think it's just either. I think it's just one of those regional things. Yeah. That's my assumption. But, but I, I think remember, that Data's name, like the character of Star Trek, is always Data. Also, uh, name for him. I think Az was saying this, somebody was on, on a stream, but apparently the reason they all call him Data is because Patrick Stewart was the first one to read out the name when they were rehearsing like even the first episode or whatever, so it just... They just that, followed it? Yeah, I think so. Fair enough. I, can, I, I don't Patrick know if that's... Stewart, True, it just sounds interesting as an idea, you know? Well, Patrick Stewart is a very... Like, he was a, an established actor before TNG, so he already had that kind of gravitas to his, you know, presence. So if he says Data, 
I'm saying data. Yeah, because uh, that's the way. This this is weird. Like there there were many actors who were like British thespians who come over to America and then they headline or sort of support this a fledgling American TV show. There's a, there's a, quite a few examples of it. It's really strange as a phenomenon. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of Brits are trained. Like like some of the best British actors, you'll be like, so where did you start out? And it'll be like theater. It's always British theater doing plays and and schnitzel. Some American actors see they're just like, ugh, theater, gay. I'm just gonna go straight into making movies. Uh, seen the new rock oh, stars? Hey. What was that? Do you, do you remember Leopold from The Simpsons? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking terrifying character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you oh, little my. jerks, listen up. You're gonna shut your stick and traps up. Hey, damn it! This is one substitute. You're not gonna screw. Yeah, he just with. looks like the most <laughs> fucking stressed <laughs> out human being there ever was. <laughs> I think it's, I think what sold it for me was that his teeth are clenched shut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And the fact that he gets introduced by Skinner only to introduce Marge. Like, what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> and then they do it again when Ned Flanders becomes the principal. Yeah, yeah. Like, All right, you listen up, you little freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Must be quite the life of a of a substitute teacher who well, yeah, just yeah. oh, what's that? Because he just, no one respects you, especially children, which is the opposite of what a lot of people probably have as their lives. Or it's easy for a child to respect you a lot if you're an adult, right? Especially in a classroom scenario. The substitute teacher is like, we don't fucking care about substitute. You have no power here. Yeah, You'll be gone. That, was, that, you. that was the, uh, that was the gag because Bart had systematically, like, broken the souls of every substitute. Like, yeah. they had Mo come in and he's like, he gave him like a fake list of student names, and it's like, <laughs> um, my, my your butt reeks was one of the names. My your butt reeks. <laughs> and, he's like, and he's like, what are you laughing at? Oh, is it? It's my. Oh fuck! What did he say? It was like <laughs> it's my um, it's like my forehead, isn't it, or something? It was well, I can't is, help is, that. Is his nose off, right? Yeah, think, yeah. It's like my my hideous nose or something. <laughs> well, I can't help that. It runs away crying, and then yeah, last up is Marge. So that screws up all of Bart's plans. No, oh, as so point, it's his, he says it's my big ears. Oh, isn't my it? big ears. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> well, children, I can't help that. Because <laughs> he runs away. <laughs> so Mo, fucking bizarre like, to she... Mo, the replacement teacher. Like, <laughs> the substitute teacher. Mo, the guy who routinely just points guns at his patrons. <laughs> you remember, like, I'm gonna give you to the count of three. Or, oh, fuck, what was it? Like, uh, he was pointing the gun at one of, like, the, the guys who's always in the bar but doesn't have a name, and it's like, you know, I'll give you to the count of three. One, <laughs> just shoots him in the back as he's running away. <laughs> I had some guy try to stick up my bar. What did you do, Mo? Well, it was it was a real tense situation, but I managed to shoot him in the spine. <laughs> and everybody just starts cheering. <laughs> sure, uh, Homer. I can lend you some money, but I but since you got no collateral, I'm gonna ask that you pay in advance. <laughs> oh, jeez, Mo, I really like my legs. Couldn't you just bash me <laughs> in the head? <laughs> hey, are you a loan shark? Do you understand how financials work? And then he just pulls a sledgehammer out from under his his bar. Now let's do this thing. As Homer um, nervously backs down. <laughs> but I got disconnected temporarily there. I hope nothing. It happened. did some buffering. We didn't hear I you, or at least I didn't. If you, were well, speaking. what I'm suggesting is that you guys stories. may have been. Unheard for a moment by the uh, the general populace. Oh, well, However, the re-upload oh, will be fine. Simpson stories. The re-upload will be fine. No problemo. How many times have you watched it a lot? Yeah, well, I, if one of my favorite. Do you remember when Bart gets expelled from uh from school because like there was a Willie's lawnmower was was just sitting outside, and then the lawnmower just comes to life. He's like, "Come on, Bart!" <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, and it betrayed him because it, it's laughing. Well, yeah. he's in, he starts uh, going like, bark, 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 bark. <laughs> when he gets expelled, the fucking lawnmower's just like, 
<laughs> and like Listen, it loses its lead. Yeah, you have to understand. Fringy and me are both from a generation where we watched Simpsons on repeat. That's just yeah, it's foundational. Well, yeah, because um, back in the day, uh, um, one of the TV stations here would play Simpsons every night of the week, and it had a Simpsons hour like three days out of the week. So like, it was just lots of Simpsons. I my, was the I, opposite. wasn't allowed to watch Simpsons. It was in a. It, I wasn't allowed to watch Simpsons. I had the entire uh, just, fucking collection. Every I bought season box sets and individual box sets, and I wanted them just to have them, not even because I needed them. Fox uh, Eight weekends. Oh yeah, when like Fox Eight would do a Simpsons marathon. Man, that was that was some good shit. Like when it was, I remember, I think they ran a marathon that was like every single episode of The Simpsons for a whole week. Mm -hmm. So like you could just turn it on and there'd just be Simpsons. It's good shit. I, uh, it's just, it's, it's just not a thing that happens these days, people. I probably watched as much South Park as Fringy did Simpsons. I've watched lots of South Park, though, as well. I could sure quote a lot of watch. stuff in South Park as well. Well, yeah, because it's, it's kind of a weird thing, because I was, it was just like Family Guy, American Dad, Futurama, South Park, Simpsons. I was just watching them all. Yeah, exactly. Or Futurama was really cool. I enjoyed Family Guy a lot, obviously. <laughs> I look, I still I still like kinda respect the earlier parts of Family Guy. Yeah. I just feel like it's yeah, I don't know. Wait, I I've even, like it's like is that weird YouTube short stuff? I've I've seen a couple of clips of newer Family Guy stuff, and there's some that I'm just like, yeah, that's funny. That was alright. That joke. Sure there's some good stuff now, there's gotta be, right? You'd hope so. Here and there. Yeah. You'd hope so, if for no other reason than law of averages. One of the most interesting things I saw, right? So there's this clip where the the, the meme in the episode, I get, or the plot, I should say, is that uh, Lois is bad at cooking. So Bonnie starts providing meals for, for Peter, and it's treated as though he's cheating on Lois, right? Uh, narratively speaking. And he's he's having food at Joe and Bonnie's house. And then he sees that Joe's come home early, and it's it's treated again like, oh god, we're we you know we're currently cheating, and the husband is home, so Peter hides under the table, and then Joe like rides up, and he sees that his literal meal has been eaten by someone, and he's like, thanks for chewing my food for me before, because I don't know, and it's just like, oh, okay, uh, um, so what's the joke? And then, uh. I think, like, uh, 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 Peter's waiting for an opportunity to get out, and so Joe is like, oh, I need to empty my, um, my, like, colostomy bag, or whatever, and it's just like, okay, so he goes to do it, um, but he, like, makes several, like, self-deprecating jokes beforehand that are delivered very straight, and then he just, uh, there's a joke about how his legs are all flippity floppity he's, he's, like, uh, paralyzed from the waist down, um, and then Peter gets up and he's like, you know, we can never speak of this sort of thing and then leaves. And I, I was just like, okay, that wasn't much of anything. I checked uh, by chance the comments and there was like several discussions that were very passionate and highly voted about how Joe has been ruined as a character. That he used to be a very confident cop who despite his disability would show that like it's much more about your character. And that um, he wouldn't let people walk all over him. He would, uh, he was quite... Uh, you know, inspiring and respectable, but these days in Family Guy, he's just the butt of every fucking joke. They can't resist being like, lol, look, he's disabled, lol, look, he's disabled. Yeah, it's and constant one of the back. other comments I saw was like, yeah, this is like the opposite of woke in a bad way. And I was like, oh shit, I didn't even think <laughs> it. they were like, yeah, it's just like, ain't it funny that he's disabled? It's, it's, instead of being like, you know, never make fun of anything to do with disabled issues, it's, it's just the, uh, that's all we got. And I was like, wow. The Family Guy fans that. are still like, you know, <laughs> they, they want they want certain things. I think um I think Family Guy the problem that Family Guy suffers from is that it's um I think that show is like became quite mean spirited. Hmm. And I think Family that, Guy um, because of that. Yeah, I think Family Guy something that a lot of people like to point out is that Homer is a much better father than Peter, and the reason why they can say that, despite the fact that like a lot of the stuff that's presented in The Simpsons would show that Homer is, like, pretty incompetent and in some ways, like, really, really, like, not a good parent at all. Yeah. Um, the reason kids. why people still say that is because of the stuff like the Maggie episodes that show, like, the tremendous sacrifices he's made for the sake of the family. Like, there's a lot of redeeming qualities of Homer that shine through. There's a lot of redeeming qualities for everybody, right? Like, Bart is a mischievous kid, but he does, like, care about preserving the relationships he has with his family. Like, he doesn't oh, the, like um, it when he disappoints Marge in particular. That, yeah, that episode is just remembered, because it's like, 
every kid would know that feel we are like oh shit yeah. what do you what do you feel like exactly. i've disappointed my parents and that's that's like what the simpsons has is that like it has heart whereas i think what happened with family guy is that it just became like um isn't it like, funny that peter's a dick to his kids and everyone well isn't it no funny reason? that peter like shoots meg with a gun like isn't that yeah funny? it's gone to that like, point and then the problem is that you've you've even lost like lois because even lois is like a asshole as well so like everybody's just and brian turned into a huge jerk too um like stewie's a much more sympathetic Stewie character is... than brian now like yeah which is insane it, it, you're right like because stewie was supposed to be almost pure evil uh but he became yeah. way more well he hated his mom and he was evil now he's just gay They've... um well i i think that he's better characterized than most of the people in that show at this point, like, he's so probably he's less probably one dimensional than a lot of them, but yeah, they 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 haven't smithers him, which is funny because now we're going back to being critical of yeah. Simpsons again. Uh, smithers became he's the gay one, uh, instead of having well, references it, and he having a full character. It's the flanderizing, same with like yeah. Principal Skinner. Principal Skinner's like it's it's worth noting, like, how much his Vietnam stuff like informs who he is. Um, but now it's kind of just like, isn't he kind of pathetic? You know, and, and like hapless when that was not who Skinner was. Um, it's like you can't resist telling the jokes so much so that you lose a lot of the substance of the characters that made them who they are. Same with Flanders. Yeah. I mean, Flanders is the prime example yeah. of that, isn't he? Perfect. It's, um, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think Family Guy is like so determined to like tell jokes um, and very disinterested in character. And that that wasn't always the case. It didn't used to be like that. But, like, they can't resist a joke that they think is kind of funny. They throw everything at the wall. And so there's, like, maybe no quality control. And what's the consequences that the characters become exactly what they need to be for the sake of a joke? Um, and someone in chat has said, I have a hard time calling them jokes. They're insults with shock value. A lot of Family Guy humor is shock value. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You weren't expecting that, and that's the joke. Um, like, as opposed look, to, isn't guess, it hilarious how Brian got like thoroughly like assaulted and harmed by Stewie because of a small loan? It's like, oh, oh no. I well, so I like that joke a lot. I like the joke about the uh, the loan and how he refuses to pay it back. But I think refuses. like, I, no, it, oh, it no, wasn't no, that. Well, he just keeps delaying. He just doesn't feel like it. He doesn't think it's a real loan. Like that's what I like. That's funny about the build up is that Stewie's like. Hey, yeah, like you know, the, you gotta pay me back soon. It's like you gotta pay me back. Oh, ah, you gotta pay me back. Like it's I'm really funny that Brian actually is so gonna distinctive. go against the grain on this one, especially because I know a lot of people like it. I agree with Rags. I didn't like that joke because it felt like it betrays how Stewie feels about Brian completely. Yeah, I legitimately really, really hated. Oh, it. I've not consumed much of the show, but I legitimately did not like that at all. To the point where I was really turned off from the show from that. I think that um, it really the only benefit you can get out of it is the exact thing you were just describing is the problem that Family Guy has right now, which is the it's which how is. shocking is that? And it's like, yeah, that is shocking. Stewie wouldn't do that. I think, I think a problem that Family Guy has is that they never know when to end a joke. Have you seen a clip? It's um, yeah, you know the song that's like, you know that song. Um, do you remember. If your point's going to be that they it. fucking play a song for too long, we've done that it many has, times. It has yeah. a long intro. It has a really long intro. It's like a minute long intro before the lyrics kick in. And so Lois is like, oh, Peter, did you like, I don't know, put something in the dishwasher that you weren't meant to? And so like Peter, the song starts playing and he's, he's like using it to delay saying anything. And so it's just a one minute intro of listening to the song. He sings the first line of the lyrics and he said, yeah, it was me. I did that. And then he just keeps singing the song. And it's like, man, that's like a minute of screen time just fucking gone like just oh, yeah i generally don't care for those jokes Someone you have to be really uh, careful with those it is the word yep that's oh, that's what came to mind as well yeah yeah, yeah. Seven, the whole first seven minutes of that that episode is just bird is the word oh it's painful um and then you have the the joke is that the joke has gone on too long it's like okay but the joke's that's got what, on too long i <laughs> like, know that waiting. doesn't mean it's funny and it's so interesting because um the the third chicken fight is like five minutes long it's it's about a quarter of an episode and when you realize that it's like dude this episode has like very little going on in it like the fact that you could spend five minutes on it on a chicken fight which I, I enjoy those chicken fights but like isn't that just funny that you could spend so long 
on like a fight without having any um like advancing of the story at all. I don't think you can do that in The Simpsons where you can spend five minutes no, on no. one joke. You know? They would. The Simpsons has more plot going. I mean, you know, it sounds a little bit cruel, but it's like, well, The Simpsons usually were telling stories. Uh, Family Guy, yeah, less so. Well, because I guess something that's comparable. You remember when they go to the candy convention? <laughs> There's a lot of great jokes in that one. That was the uh, the homosexual harassment episode. It is, and it uh, was ahead of its time by fucking decades. There were so many great jokes in the uh, in the candy convention where like Maude sits down and gets like a stick of celery, and then a security guy's like, "You gotta put some sugar on that or get out." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she just pulls it out of her handbag, right? Yeah, and then he just immediately comes up and tells her. And then when, like, yeah, the gummy Venus Jamilo, and it's like, he wants to steal it. He's like, you know, this is gonna be, like, quite tricky. <laughs> just punches the glass and yeah. steals it. And then when they're running away, goddamn, one of my favorite jokes in that show, when he gets the uh, vending machine, gets, like, the Coke, and then mixes it in with, like, um... Oh, it was, it was like, yeah, two really fizzy things combined. He throws it like a grenade and runs away from the explosion in slow motion. <laughs> so good. And it's like, there's so much inventiveness in that as an action sequence. And it only even lasts like 30 seconds, but it feels way longer than that. Yeah, Pop Rocks, that's it. <laughs> See you in hell, candy boys. Oh, good I love times. it. Yeah. Because that is what would happen if you put pop rocks on a on a like a coke. It, it would, would explode and detonate. blow up a whole building. Yeah, that's um, the thing. They just they they could throw jokes. Like there was the one when um when Mole Man he's just promoting solar energy and there's just like this FBI looking guy like so this stuff really works. It certainly does. Oh well, lots of luck. And then karate chops him in the back of the head, and then they just change it out for like oil and gas. It's just such. A, it's like ten seconds for a joke, and then you're just moving right on to the next one. They just machine gun out jokes. The, the, the Gooberman stopping stopping uh, stopping Paul Hans and, Mole Man, yeah, the most Paul unfortunate Hans man. man. <laughs> Hans Mole Man's life is just paid. You're doing your job today, Mr. Sun. Mr. Sun then sets on fire. <laughs> I'm 31 years old! <laughs> Dude, that was one of my yeah, favorite magic. jokes when I first heard that. Alcohol has ruined my football. life. <laughs> man getting hit by football as well. Oh, man. It's like, oh, this contest is over. Give that man the $10,000. <laughs> I don't think we could literally make a podcast of remembering Simpsons. <laughs> hey, remember that great Simpsons joke? Yeah. Hey, when if these Homer big goes... corporations can make millions off of remember things, surely we can make a podcast out of it. Yeah. Like, um... Now I'm just thinking again about simple jokes when Homer goes back to get his job and it's like, are you a new applicant with this nice big door? It's like, no, I'm actually coming to get my job back through there. And it's like a little dog hole. And then he has to crawl through a bunch of dirt. And Mr. Burns is standing there waiting for him to come out. So come crawling back, okay? <laughs> he created a door to make the employee literally come crawling back for a job. Dude, I like, I feel like something Mr. Burns would do. Mm-hmm. Including but not limited to fucking things that can kill his employees because he's a fucking horrible person. But hey, Lenny, I want you to tell me why you should keep your job without using the letter E. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a great work guy. <laughs> You're fired. But I didn't. You will. <laughs> Press the button, he falls down the trapdoor. <laughs> um, I am going to go to the Lenny's resting room. Soul. So. Continue, I'll be back. His poor yeah. eye. There's so many jokes about the things that happen to Lenny's eye. Getting pudding thrown in his eye. Oh, my eye! I'm not supposed to get pudding in it! <laughs> and then getting soap in his eye. Oh, and then the, the punchline, I think. There's a good example of a running gag. Lenny's eye just keeps getting hurt. Um, And then, uh, and then like, the punchline was that there's this guy promoting something called Omnigogs that are just these really strong, sturdy goggles. And he, he like, pulls off a rubber band, it hits him in the face, he's like, I'm alright, folks, thanks to my Omnigogs! And then Lenny turns around with a patch on his eye, a little late for Lenny! <laughs> a little late for Lenny! 
to get his Omni goggles. All right, and then of course someone's reminded me in chat. The goggles they do nothing when Radio Wolf Castle is getting swept away by the like one million dollar single take of, of the radioactive stuff. That one's got a lot of good jokes too. Uh, Millhouse, we've got to shoot the Jiminy Jilliker scene again. But we did it. It took 18 hours, but we did it. It's done. No, we gotta shoot it from every angle. Again and again. And again and again and again. <laughs> Just drags him out. Real acid. goggles. <laughs> it's kind of funny, because, I mean, that's a... That's a um that's a relic from like an, a different time when you had a shot that cost one million dollars that you had to shoot once and get it right. Now it doesn't matter. No shot costs one million dollars anymore, I guess. Um much like Family Guy, this segment of remembering the Simpsons funny moments has gone far on far too long. I disagree. I could do this for forever. I make speech. no uh, claims. What well, about how long or short this segment should be? I think it's a fine segment considering that Mahler is in the loo room and exactly. I have nothing we to really add when it comes to remembering Simpsons because I've watched so little of it. We this can't is continue with... time to shine. Well, it's just we, we can't continue time. with the super chats at the moment, so you're going to have to wait for a second. That's um, true. Mahler hoards them all in his, his golden cave and we only mm -hmm. get to experience super chats through his generosity exactly. well, that's what he calls with it with his blessings do south park oh i yeah i could um i really could <laughs> like it's, it's a lot of south park south park gags south park is a really rare show though in that it's been going for i think 25 years now i think it's up to 25 years and it's still relevant and funny um I don't know that I'd say it's as funny as I think. I usually describe the peak as like season six through ten. That's like what when I think of like what South Park is, I usually think of that era. But um, the fact that it's still really entertaining now, and it's it's not even going to end anytime soon. They got like a nine hundred hundred million dollar deal with Viacom to like make a whole bunch of streaming specials for uh, South Park and a few new seasons. Thoughts on Bob's Burgers? I like Bob's Burgers. I actually started watching the movie, but then I stopped. Um, I should finish it. I remember when Why Bob's Burgers... Uh, um, it just wasn't grabbing me, did, the film, I don't think. Um, which is, Did it not feel like the show? or It did feel like the show. I, I just mm -hmm. wasn't... Um, I, I think maybe I, I need to give it a second chance, though. Um, I think because um, Bob's Burgers has been going for a long time as well, like over a decade. And um, I haven't watched uh, all of it. I think I watched like a few seasons. I remember season one was a bit like, eh, but then like by season two, it kind of started to figure out what it was. Um, and then it, it, it started getting funny. I remember there was a really great gag where um, Bob is teaching Tina how to drive in an empty uh, parking lot. Um, and like Tina's like a very kind of neurotic and nervous person. And um, as she's driving the car, she's steering it towards the only car in the lot. And Bob is just sort of there like, no, it's it's fine. Uh, uh, Tina, you're, you're, you're kind of driving towards the only car in the lot. All right, Tina, you, you can turn, turn one direction. Tina, you're just swerving back and forth. Turn one way and stick with it, Tina. And then you just start screaming for her to stop the car as he starts to realize that she's going to drive straight into it. And then the best part was... um. His car got destroyed. The car that she crashed into had a little ding, but she wouldn't let him just drive off without leaving a note. And then the whole episode ensues from that. Um, it's just it like looks like really... Mahler is Mahler's actually pooper chatting right now. He I've says, noticed. "Rags and Fongy, most influential media on your life." Well, oh, uh, I think I think it's Lord of the Rings. Those movies were the most influential pieces of media in my life. When I watched them in the theaters and everything, I was pretty young, impressionable, and they were so good, and they really just fed into... I already liked fantasy stuff, but I think those did such a... They, they played a big part in really sort of cementing how, how much I love fantasy and the things I like about it. 
the um, I had the CDs, uh, the soundtracks, and I would just I would just listen to them uh, constantly. Um, I just every, so much of that was great. I love it, love it to this day. And it it, it has characters that I just think about a lot, and moments that I think That's about a lot front. that are very emotional and important, and we got a lot of good life lessons in there and examples of how you should be. So I'm gonna say Lord of the Rings. Uh, mine probably would be The Simpsons. I know that we meme about all the references, but like Simpsons was super formative. Um, that's probably like the first real sort of love for for like a you know a television show. Um, yeah, like I think Simpsons. I think my interest in The Simpsons explains a lot my perspectives on uh comedy cartoons. Um, and I guess an attitude in general towards like uh maybe like a more irreverence sort of like a preference for like an irreverent style of comedy satire. Uh, yeah. Like Simpsons is super important and influential. Um, and then of course, because of the Simpsons that spun off into other things, right? Like Futurama, um, South Park, uh, basically like whatever cartoons, I think that probably would have been the start though. Maybe I was always going to enjoy cartoons cause I think animation's great. Love it. I think there's so much you can do with animation that, um, like, a animation is um the 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 joy that can come from just like the way that something moves and how like unique and distinct that is to animation as like the core focus of the craft um and there's just like a lot of great potential as well as um uh more more breadth in what you can do um in like a cartoon world compared to like a real world um there's just so many jokes at your disposal so many things that you can play around with like physics and you know surrealism and things not to say that those things aren't you know at the disposal of people making live action stuff i mean yeah. when when you described animation is the all the different ways it could bring life to things i mean literally animation is from the latin anima which is mm -hmm. the spirit yeah exactly you it's a great, great it's way to describe it. it was always weird when there was yep. like theories about how like, EFAP have this, you know, lame uh, bias against animation. And it was always like, Is that wait, a thing? what? There was a couple people who said it in the, and uh, people had highlighted it in the Discord and showed me. I was like, why the fuck is that? Like, like the opposite of true for me. It would, it, well, because you were talking about most influential media. Animation. Someone was like, oh, it's going to be Angel for Muller. And it's like, well, it's Buffy and Angel or Simpsons. Simpsons is uh, pretty fucking foundational for me. Um, I don't remember things before The Simpsons, okay? <laughs> I was watching it and I was obsessed with it. Is, a lot of my favorite stuff is cartoons. Simpsons, Archer, South Park, Looney Tunes. I just named all the ones I was um, watching <laughs> all over the place for like a huge portion of my life. So it was just, it was so mm -hmm. odd to, to hear that. And then I think once we did the Arcane episodes, people were like, oh, they don't hate animation? If anybody thought it's that. Like, no. <laughs> no. No. Not at all, actually. Kind of adore it. Well, not even kind of. I do adore it. Yeah. Like, it's an, inc it's an incredible thing that exists that we make. Um, as humans, like animation is so cool, or whatever species we may be, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, seen the new Rockstars video on Suicide Squad? They claimed that Enchantress is better than Avengers One Loki because at least she's not another angry white man. Nice. Hmm. I totally agree. Um. New Rockstars? What, what channel is this? Uh, Rockstars? Uh, New Rockstars, I've only known them as the people who are like, If you see in this scene, we have four statues. One of them is the God of Death from blah 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 blah. And this, this could mean that we'll have future movies regarding that God fighting Thor. That sort of thing. I never, I didn't, I didn't think they would ever argue, oh, Enchantress is better than Loki because she's not white. So it's like, oh, well, oh, she <laughs> she's white. not a man, she's not sorry. Yeah. She's white-ish, yeah. Well, yeah, because she, she changes colors, right, when she goes super she's evil like, demon I thought mode. she was like a South American kind well, of... That's well, that's uh, the Cara Delevingne is British. Like, I was going to say, it's possessed a white lady, so... Yeah, uh, she's transracial, Fringy. I don't, uh, I'd be curious to see that. I, I'm surprised that rock, rock stars would try that, but, uh, you know, why not, I guess, if you're running out of things to say about a film. Uh, I know why they want the sock. Wink, wink. Ew. I don't. Ew. 
to keep their feet warm. Not to defend this film, but it is implied only the Necrosword knew what the key was. Oh yeah, I think we talked about that, and I said that's the problem. Um, is the establishing that, and then also having it so that all the gods know where Eternity was, or the key. Like there, there was. Remember, Zeus knows, so it's it's like it's got to go beyond the Necrosword. I like how I'm giving that to the film too. The Necrosword. What yeah, is that? The Necrosword I don't knows, fucking yeah. know. It just knows it's the this sword stuff that too. Knows. Yeah. Was the Necrosword crafted from some ancient temple from a demon in the MCU universe too? And they, they can make more Probably, of them? Probably, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> that's how I'd do it. I know why they... Oh, wait. that's the, Someone said that twice? The sock thing? Okay. <laughs> There's legit nice. two of them. Um, hello, all my tacos. Hello. Oh, hi! There is no center of the universe. The Big Bang was everywhere. Also, are these similar to gods in Moon Man? Like, multiverse where contradictory views of the same concept exist in separate media? Um, I haven't seen Moon Man. Or Red. Whatever it might be. But uh, the MCU's definitely got contradictory views on pretty much everything at this point. Yeah. What doesn't it have contradictory views on? Uh, Shafrilis put it well when he said, It feels like a bad parody of Taika's humor, and that is the movie that killed Phase 4 for him. Well, Phase 4's about to be over, so... Uh, I'm sorry that this is... I, I'm glad that you had a breaking point. It's a shame it took you this fucking long. I don't even... Like, if someone said, What killed Phase 4 for you? I'd be like, Well, it was never alive. We, we started... WandaVision's the first thing, right? It's more like, yeah. Here's a body, can you resuscitate it? Not, What, what point is it dead? Yeah. And it's like, they... I think the closest we got was No Way Home, where I was like, ooh, and then, but ooh. there was no reason to think anything else would have been able to entertain me like that, because we are now hyper aware of the writers, directors, and the process of MCU films being made. It's not like when I was super young, where I would just be like, it's the next one, will this one be good? If I know Michael Waldron's writing a thing that I'm about to watch, I have, like, no reason at all to think that there would be anything good at it. And uh, Yeah, I bet $10,000 it'd be shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, hello all my tacos again. Oh, um, hi there! Korg was only mostly dead. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, <laughs> wait, Jay's here? DLS time, baby, everyone look away. Especially you, Metal. Also gonna be seeing this film next week. Fuck my life, there's no god. <laughs> like, the, oh, this I mean, is the, the film that got you on, on that point. Just like... Why would God allow Thor Love and Thunder to happen? I'll be real. Uh, better call Soul Theory. Gus will give birth to Skinny Pete. This will explain why he is, in fact, he's fatter in Better Call Soul than in Breaking Bad. Okay. Um, that's a theory, yeah. It could happen. Ringy once asked, is Revenge of the Fallen better than Phase 4? Yes, because the CGI is finished and Optimus 1v3 fight is still badass. I remember so little of those films. It, it's kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean after the first one. It's just sort of sludge as to what occurs in what movie. I'd have to see them again. I'm yeah. pretty sure Revenge of the Fallen is like utterly incoherent. It's just the reason why I brought it up. I'm pretty sure that the whole like central plot doesn't make any sense at all. Is that the third one? No, it's the second one. Third one is Dark oh. of the Moon. Which is also terrible. Uh -huh. Um Yeah, because I'm trying to remember. Third one is Is the third one with with um Leonard Nimoy? Uh, uh yes. That's right. Okay. Sentinel Prime or something. That's the thing. I did watch all these films. I just, uh, yeah. man, it's tough to remember. Uh, move on, Muller. It's not about the views. It's about sending a message. Oh, yeah, just have in the chat, you know? It's a nice chat today. Nice chat. Rags is literally the best at saying hello. Well... I've had a lot of practice. Yeah, you've been working on it. Say professionally a hello sayer. I'm a I'm a I'm a professional greeter. This is literally not a super chat. Oh. Hmm. It was listed as a super chat. 
weird. It's strange. There's clearly some confusion here. Are you still out there, Ra? Apparently he is. How could we ever know for sure? Hey fellas, if you're looking for a new EFAP mini show, I highly recommend Resident Evil on Netflix. It's an unhappy marriage of Batwoman and Boba Fett. I don't want to watch it. That's already out of the zeitgeist as well. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Again, I still, I still think... he doesn't want to watch it? Fringy, I think so, yeah. I, I guess Fringy, he does? I, think I don't he... think I want to watch it. Oh, Fringy, we're gonna. <laughs> so strap uh, on. Uh... Yeah, we're doing it. We're watching the movie and we're watching the show. Bring you, you went to the cinema and watched Thor: Love and Thunder, okay? So I did. <laughs> oh I did. yeah, he. <laughs> I didn't yeah. expect it to be that bad. But... Yeah, well, hey, I you know what? I don't blame you the... for going. Maybe yeah, everyone's overblowed the Resident Evil show. Maybe it's really good. Yeah, oh. maybe we can be we could uh, be controversial for something we don't mind being controversial about for once. Yeah. Uh, Thor 4 was a visual diarrhea even in 3D. Oh. Even in 3D? Saw it in 3D. I think on, as if yeah. even in as if something being in 3D means that it'll be better have less visual diarrhea. You know, I, I often forget this and I have to remind myself, the one time I've seen The Rise of Skywalker, I had to see it in the 3D. Uh, theater because of just the way that tickets or whatever worked or something. Uh -huh. I saw that movie in 3D. Well, hey, great. That's that's awesome, right? Right? Great. An extra dimension of incredible. Mm hmm. Whole new dimension of fun. Yeah, the movie was shit. Um, do you like the idea that fan content such as fan art, comics, films, games, etc., are illegal when it's based on a brand like Star Wars? Illegal. It depends on what you do with it. So that makes um, and it's not the well, it's, it's, of it, it's, it's copyright infringement, right? It's a tough one because uh, it would be probably case by case, right? Like if someone made something absolutely incredible, but it is entirely reliant on that copyright, but they're not looking to make money, they just want people to be able to have access to it, and the company's like, no, you can't do that. Yeah, I, like I fan would art and things like that. That's <sighs> should totally be allowed. It fe yeah, it just feels awful. It's like oh man, they 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 work so hard. Um, the ones that really well, yeah, like when. Uh, yeah. this I was gonna mention that wasn't it the Metroid one where they made it so that I am to uh, yeah another Metroid Two remake came out and then I think it got uh taken down because they were making their own Metroid Two remake. There's there's a lot of little things like that that happen. They're like oh, but they come from rules that are in place for good reason as well. Um, well to protect yeah. people from having their stuff get taken. Yeah, know? so it's like you know case by case as far as I'm concerned. Because uh, you you can get people who are doing a sneaky. I'll be having that. I mean, I think fan art's really cool, and I think that it makes sense for um. I think it makes sense for a lot of companies to allow fan art to exist. It's a good way to get people to be invested in like a particular IP to be creative and express themselves and tether more of themselves to it, and it just keeps your thing like more re relevant. More what? So to me, relevant? it just makes sense to like allow. Yeah, because people are people are talking about it, right? They're still engaging yeah. with that particular like, content. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's uh, a thing. Let me ask you this. If, well, you go ahead, Mahler. I was just going to say that's the thing that happens a lot with uh, Fring's microphone. I'm used to it now, where he'll stop and then he'll speak pretty fast after about a two yeah, second fine. gap that catches him back up. Yeah, I feel like I didn't miss a word. I feel like we're playing yeah. fast and loose with time travel here on Ethan. Well, see, it just did um, it with you, Rags, where you cut out. Interesting. And went really nice. Fast. Oh my god. On my end. From my point of view, you're cutting out for a second and then speaking really fast. Well, then you are lost. That should have been Anakin's line. <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah, I think I fan was... art is like a good thing, um, generally. Absolutely, yes. Um, there is, I know, in. Let's say that you had an artist. And you went to this artist and said, I would love you to draw my my character, my YouTube persona, my furry, whatever it is, my Sonic OC. And I want you to draw them in like Stormtrooper armor, or I want you to draw them as a as as a Guardians of the Galaxy character, something like that. Should that where does that sit in terms of legality? Like, can I pay this um, artist to draw something that is copyrighted 
I mean, you can pay somebody for their services, essentially, yeah. Um, and wait, are you asking legally like, or ethically? Take, uh, I guess legally, because ethically I'm totally fine with it, uh, but yeah. legally, I wonder, is that one of those, technically it's not illegal, but there's just no possible way to stop people from doing that? Like, I'm not sure what it looks like where somebody says, as hey, you draw, my, draw my draw my YouTube avatar. Yeah, how could you possibly stop that or police it? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure what that uh I'm not sure what that looks like, and it seems like it'd be more trouble than it's worth. Probably, and plus there is an element of like, are we gonna look like such dicks that it hurts us? It's better to it's it's almost like is this this is just free advertising in a sense, where like yeah, someone's getting paid forty, fifty, sixty, hundred, whatever dollars to do this drawing, and yeah, it contains our copyrighted stuff, but people are gonna see that and associate it with us or our brand or and it's just worth it mm -hmm. it's a it's um yeah it's complicated does the production value of fan content matter when it comes to how legal it is what do you mean like that's all they've said so i guess we have to infer uh, What's uh can it's, you read that read that one more time does the production quality change your approach on how legal fan art is. So I'm like pretty sure that like when it comes to fair use, there's there's factors that are considered, and one of them is like if you're making money off of it, but it's not like a determining factor. I thought by um, production quality they mean like how good it is, like how yeah. well made it is. is. I mean that's that's irrelevant. Like I don't see how that has any bearing at all, whether it's good or bad, as well, like an illustration or something. In the extremes, it probably would be relevant. In the, it's such a bad drawing of a stormtrooper. They don't that even you like. Couldn't say it's a storm yeah, they're like. Yeah, that's what it, I was thinking. It doesn't even. It's just like a weird stick bad. <laughs> that's that's all. But gen generally, it should be the determining factor. No, I disagree. Why would it be the only determining factor if you're making money off of it? I'd be curious what stole... um they've decided. Which which direction well, they go in there? Like, if it's good enough, it shouldn't be allowed to be sold, or if it's bad enough, it sh shouldn't. I, I'm well, not... I mean, I mean, let's put it this way: Let's say somebody writes a book, and you're like, "This is my fan reproduction. Everything is the same except I change one word, but I'm releasing it for free." That should be allowed. I mean, like, hell, just piracy, fan? where I'm just gonna upload stuff, and well, I'm not gonna the, make any the, money off of it. The principle of all of this is that because you created something, you should have the exclusive rights to determine how it's used with exceptions, yeah. like limitations. Yeah, you like made it. Criticism, parody, it those are things that are allowed. Um, but I mean, it, it, it's, it, that's, that's the point. Um, and you could say that one of the secondary points is to prevent people from making money off of, um, off of what you made, right? Because that's obviously something that people are opposed to. But like the making money part, it's the reason why Nintendo could take down that Metro Tomb remake and there's no recourse because it's that they own Metroid. That's their intellectual property to do with as they please. Yeah, and they can have, of course, yeah, they always had the choice to leave it up, right? They could leave it up, which I think that would have been the, the right decision to make. Like, on a because, like, if somebody spent eight years working on a fan project, like, you know, come on, <laughs> there's kind of that attitude, like, come on, man. Um, but of course, they're allowed to do it. Yeah, most it, companies it is... will let you do it. Like, you, it's this. Same as Let's Plays and Long Plays, the companies will let you do it, but they could choose not to at any point in time. Um, and whether or not you'd be allowed to continue doing it anymore would be either you're not allowed to, or you would have to, I don't know, have some sort of legislative legislative reform or change. And he's just his PC and motive. Yeah, you, you're doing How much the, of that the gaps a couple of times. Well, no, everything you said is was clear. It's just that there's these weird moments where you, you pause for two seconds and then you speak fast for a little uh, bit and catches up. Right. Uh, well, so the worst thing uh, about it is that it prompts me and Rags to say something sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, no. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm still talking. That's what I will say is that uh, whatever we're interrupting you a little bit harsher than you may have thought, it's probably because we thought you stopped talking. Um. But yeah, uh, I That's don't... That's gonna be our excuse for always now. If we just decide we want to talk over you, because we're like, oh, fuck what Fringy's talking about. I want to talk about cupcakes. <laughs> oh, sorry, Fringy. We, we, we're fine. Nothing we, wrong with talking about cupcakes. Just... No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Didn't even imply it. Uh, In fact, I implied the opposite. I implied that it was maybe preferable to talk about them. True.
watched reactions to Kenobi Episode 3. When the Jedi names appeared on the walls, one person said, Wow, so many characters can have shows now. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds rough. Think of the potential. We can watch even more shows of Jedi being shit. Watch Hell or High Water for good writing. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a question. Would, do you want to you watch Hell or do you watch High Water if you're looking for good writing? In which case, I don't know which of those two things has been So I was thinking writing. if I was to watch Hell, it's like, oh god, I don't want to be in Hell, do I? Like, I'm not seeing, if I'm yeah. watching Plus, it, I'm probably the there. writing of Hell is... There's some issues with, with Hell in terms of writing consistency. But so then, I assume that High I'm, Water is... Are we assuming this is on a screen? Because if it's High Water, then I'm actually there. It's like, oh shit, am I okay? Am I dying? What's going on? I don't want to well, drown. Well, Underwater is High Water, right? There's, it, I mean, it goes up really high, and mm -hmm. that was a pretty good movie. So I certainly so I enjoyed it. Gave it, what, like a six, I think? Five? Yeah, I think it was pretty good. I think it was a six. I think it was a, a, a slightly above average on our scale. You know the water world? No. Underwater. Oh, I guess they may be saying... The water world does have high water. Yeah, water that world would true. count as high water. It's all relative, yeah, really, but you know, I think it's fair to say. Most water is high, except for that puddle. Yeah, I could see the one you're talking about right there. Wanda's victims deserve justice. Wanda dying is just running away again. They should have put her on trial and sent her to the tallest gallow that would be too good for her. This isn't going to come up. When she comes back, and she will come back, she'll save the day, and she'll say, I'm so fucking sorry to, like, Doctor Strange, maybe America Chavez, maybe Wong, who, who knows. And then, like, the, you know, Galactus will be there going, Rah! and then she'll fire lasers at him, and they'll all work together, and then... To be like, I know you, you can never forgive what I've done, but remember, I'll always be there for you guys if you need me. And then she'll run away, and then she'll have another fucking TV show where she's gonna have to fight Agatha again or some bullshit until she is like, they just they desperately going to try and repair her, they getting her back to hero status, but it'll never work because they don't have the balls to have her actually be responsible. And this is this Westview was one thing. Right? That was that was one thing. What she's done after MOM is it's over. It's the it, how do you even come back from it? Yeah, I don't know. Fucking insane. Are you gonna go into the Illuminati universe and go apologize to all the families of those people you killed? No, you're not. You're gonna forget that ever happened. I hate it. The movie feels like it was written for the guys in the mental hospital during pudding time. Oh, hey, at least they're happy then. Somebody gets something out of Thor: Love and Thunder. That's good. Uh, that's something came of that. Ralph the Movie Maker did reviews of Ragnarok and Thor: Love and Thunder in one video. If you plan on covering Love and Thunder reviews, that would be a good choice because it has tism. I'm pretty sure I actually happened to listen to that. Um, I was yeah, I think building some shelves and I needed something and I saw it in uh, on my homepage. I don't remember finding anything he said interesting. No offense to, to Ralph. I, I just remember thinking, like, this is a very uh, prosaic take on the movies. Um, he didn't seem to care that much. Uh, I don't know if it would be, like, the sort of thing that would be worthwhile for, like, an EFAP, especially after um, all the discussion we've had on Thor Love and Thunder at this point. But, cause, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. We've had the, the two catch ups on the movie, which at this point. Uh, We've, we've, we've talked a whole bunch about it, and and good old Doctor Strange and one that keeps popping up. Um, oh, oh, I'm watching Stranger Things for the first time with my dad, and we just got to season three, and I've never hated a season this far in my life. I hate what they did to Hopper. I hate everything. Yeah, that is the feel. That is why I was never going to touch season four. But then I did. Dun dun dun. Uh. Can Jay fly? Why is Jay hiding the ability to fly from us? What kind of sicko would keep that under wraps? Also high Rex. Hi. I don't know. I have to ask. Hi, Morley. Yes, yeah, sorry, this is about music. I know you're mostly into classical metal, but have you listened to Gojira B4? I think you'd like him. EFAP for the ages. I hear they want to save whales. Oh, that's nice of them. But, uh... Um... No, I've not listened to them before. Uh, I've recently been listening to Blind Guardian. I didn't realize what kind of music they made. 
Uh, it's weird how, you know, bands that have been around for, like, decades, we were just like, I know of them, but I never really listened to them properly. And, uh, Wheel of Time, specifically, the song they made, presumably inspired by Wheel of Time, the books. Fucking hell. That is one of the best songs that exists, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, what, it's Wheel of Time by who? <laughs> Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time. Yeah, as I um, said, Wheel of Time. Oh, I thought, I thought you were saying We Love Time, which, to be fair... Yeah. Oh, I love time. <laughs> yeah, I'm a <laughs> we fan love of time. time. <laughs> we love time. <laughs> guys, guys, shout out to time. <laughs> yeah, I just want, yeah, I just want to do a song committing to, you know, Wheel of Time. Uh, yeah, Wheel of Time by Blind Guardian. I was, I was shown it by a friend recently, and I was like, oh, fuck, this is everything I like about my favorite music. I'm not gonna promise everyone else would like it, but uh, I was a big fan. I've listened to it probably too many times. Well, maybe there's no such thing. Uh, good for good for editing audio too, because uh, music you can kind of get away with if you put it on low enough. Um, so you might miss on like little artifacting. Sometimes it turns up in bad takes. In this, that way, or the other. Um. Wouldn't it have been great if Gore caused actual doubt on Valkyrie and Jane since Thor and the other gods had abandoned them as well? You could tell. I thought that's what they were going for. Yeah, there was a tiny they... idea about that, just the tiniest sliver of an idea, and then it, they, like, it was gone. Mentioned it, mm -hmm. and yeah, as soon as it came, it went. Man, imagine it's how okay. cool it would be Bad if, boy. um, you know, you made it so the sword gave Gore like an encyclopedic knowledge of. God's histories, maybe. I don't know. It's kind of a magical thing at that point, but um, you know, you could know... Rem remember, Odin's history is apparently, like, blood-soaked, so you could easily have Gore let Thor know about all this shit um, and really test his resolve on, like, what the gods have done for the world, really. Uh, and, you know, th there's an easy arc. There's easy storytelling shit to be done there. Uh, but we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't do it that much. We didn't do it. The spiders crafted Gore's sword so he could read the script. Well, you must have been surprised when you found out he was playing four different characters. Kind uh, of axing, but you know, not impossible. Lord Longbong of Mubslington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? And there's less going Ooh. on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. Yes. Oh, well, Wagsy, Scritch is for the good boy. Oh, thank you. There, we very we very possibly just might do that. I think that's a big possibility in the lands of possibleness. And just saying, if we do do it, mm -hmm. I will probably uh, I'll probably enjoy that little journey. I'd imagine we all would. It's uh, it's one of those movies that was considered pretty okay to good back then, so it might even be great at this point. You know how it be. You know how it go. And how it be, and it be how it do. The movie makes it seem like Jane is stronger and better when she's off meds, so is Taika implying that you shouldn't be on meds? No. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't dealing with a Joker, okay? Like, that was clearly Joker's message. I think that, um... The stream is officially longer than EFAP 195. The catch-up for 195 is longer than 195. Makes you sense. You guys just asked so many amazing questions. Uh... Yeah, and and, and it's, it's like the it's a weird rule that they imply kind of that she would have made it had she stayed on the meds. Which, uh, I don't know if they wanted to imply that or not, but she chose the hammer. Your respect for the Pegasus name is appreciated. Yeah, I wanted to make sure we don't just throw it around and give it to Thor: Love and Thunder's horse. You know, yeah, it's just I just wanted to make sure. Disney not knowing old business saying, you can't have it fast, cheap, and quality. You can only have two of the three, but not all. Do you want it done fast? Do you want it done cheap? Or do you want it done well? Pick two. Yeah, I've always, I've always liked the idea that that's, that you cannot get all three. It's literally impossible. My father, and, uh, who is an architect, he uses that expression often. Uh when he talks about jobs and clients and things, and it's something he often has to explain to people. It's very rare that you can get all three of those things. So just plan to get two. 
Well, yeah, all of the um, the ideas I come up with in my head, I usually am like, no, because that, no, yeah, no, because that. Because anything I can think of that would offset it, it would reset standards in general and then move things around, if you know what I mean. Like, if we cracked it so that, I don't know, you could get loads of labor really quickly and cheaply, then it would make it so that quality becomes a whole new thing. Like, the levels of quality would change, and thus this would still apply, this formula. Like, it's just a constant, this thing. Um, it's very good at helping you understand as well, just like how this all works. But the the MCU is definitely gone with uh, fast and cheap. Yes. Well, yeah. Cheap. All cheap is just general low quality. Um, well, I guess I mean like, yeah, because you'd be like cheap. It's like hundreds of millions, and I'd be like um, cheap in, in terms. Yeah, in terms of its quality, it's kind of like it's gonna. It's going to either be of low quality or it's going to cost you little. They're almost just intrinsically linked, almost. But part of it, I'm assuming, is the fact that they just don't have enough people they could even pay to get the CGI work done. Uh, they pile on uh, like thousands of people already. Kind of nuts. Yo, Massives, check out Severance on Apple TV. It's a really cool show with a lot of neat stuff, and it utilizes a lot of liminal cinematography. The intro is also banger. Thor was poo, also high rag. Hi to you. Well, gosh, dingle dang don. I don't, I don't know what this Severance TV show is. Does that sound familiar to you, Fringy? Severance? I think I've heard about it. I think I heard someone mention it. Mm. It's been mentioned, I think, on EFAP before, actually. Apple TV. Like this. Nobody's watching anything on Apple TV. So someone mentioned earlier that that's where the dinosaur program I was talking about wanting to watch is actually on. It feels um kind of annoying, and it probably is so unfair for me to feel this way, but I'm like, Netflix, Amazon, okay, Disney Plus, I'm like, eh, eh, okay, Apple TV, I'm like, no, come on. In, you can't join the table, too. I mean, the real ones. Yeah, and then Apple TV's like, oh, I, I have programs. I, ha I have a whole uh, UI set up. What's wrong with me? And I'm like, I... I have eye shows. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I just... I don't want... How many fucking streaming services are there going to be? Because Paramount Plus is another one, right? Um, I don't know how many main ones there are. I don't even know what... Uh, Hulu, HBO Max, yeah. Though apparently HBO Max is going to be getting scaled back big time now. Well, haven't they all been reporting trouble? Like, uh, Netflix? A lot of them have. As well, yeah. yeah it's... Netflix is no longer the only uh, cowboy in town, it seems. No. Mm -hmm. Netflix, it seems, has chilled. I enjoyed the film, but that's only because I mentally detached this film from previous films. I view it as the spiritual sequel to Batman and Robin. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's something you could do, but the thing is, Batman and Robin is fun. It is fun. It is fun, and legitimately, its goofiness can give me legitimate pleasure. I... This movie makes me sad when it's trying to be very funny. Here's here's a way to put I it. This movie is the try-hard version of Batman and Robin. If they told me there's a there's a timeline where Batman and Robin made ten tens of trillions, and then they made several sequels, and Arnie came back, and Clooney kept going as Batman, and we had a uh, you know Scarecrow shows up, uh, fucking wh whoever it doesn't matter. I I I would be very much interested in seeing those. However, when you say, ooh, uh, you know, Thor Thunderclap is coming out in 2026, made by Taika Waititi, I'd be like, hmm. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think people would be like, well, you know, this one could be good. It's like, can we just get told ahead of time with this one? Taika, do you give a shit? Just let us know. Can the time traveler visit me and just, like, let me know? I was like, just save your time. I don't want to um, know the big things, like when I die or anything. I just want to know if I should waste my time with a movie or not. <laughs> Joel Schumacher, he cared, okay, when making Batman and Robin. He gave a shit. He got them. He he got them Batman nipples in there. You know, you don't you don't just casually not have those. You either passionately put them in or passionately keep them out. Right. So um, you know, I <sighs> we'll see. We'll see what else is in with Thor eventually. Uh. Hmm. Hi, Rags. You once asked what makes a good weld. A good, strong weld is smooth, even, and uniform across the entire length with tightly packed ripples. That makes sense, because you wouldn't want any weak points. Yeah. So I imagine consistency in your weld is very important. 
Um, it also must be properly fused to the base metal along each side with no holes, slag inclusions, or imperfections inside it. The best wells will pass an x-ray test. Oh, that's kind of neat. Oh, neat! Also, shout out to all my fellow EFAPA welders in the chat. Yeah. Welders unite. Welders of the welders. world, rise up. Join together in a uniform, smooth fashion. You weld the fuck out of stuff, okay, guys? You get welded. Do it, yeah. Thunderclap sounds like an STD. That's fair. It's a godlike STD. In the final fight, we see Gore about to die, and he tries to put the sword back together, so maybe his life force is tied to it. Well, the implication is that the sword kills you eventually anyway. Uh, as for it would end your life quickly if the sword were to be destroyed after you've been cursed by it, yeah, maybe. That, that, that could be the case. Gore's accent keeps changing was really distracting. Was, was it changing a lot? Did you guys notice that? The form of the sword? No, Gore's accent. Oh. I can't remember. Honestly, I just can't remember. I think I was too distracted by the writing to pay attention to if his accent was consistent or not. Yeah. I assume not, because it's a very talented actor who probably wouldn't do that. Unless Taika's like, wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if his <laughs> accent just changed? <laughs> probably. Ima imagine Chris Bale was like, oh, can we do another take there? I think I fucked up. And he's like, nah, man, it's great. great. No, no. It's organic. We'll leave it in. Uh, the center of the universe thing reminds me a bit of from Ratchet and Clank Crack in Time, where Dr. Nefarious claims the Timekeeper's Clock is the very center of the universe, give or take 50 feet. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like a funny sort of recognition of it. Uh, 1 to 10, how much does this steal from Kratos? I mean... <laughs> Kratos' story involves uh, a god doing shit to him that's unfair and loved ones are affected so I suppose you could argue there's a lot of similarities for Gore but I think that's a well told story enough that um, I wouldn't call it like plagiarism I, th I just think that it's really badly executed you know uh, Child Soldiers Thor Love and War Crimes I mean it, it's bizarre the whole sequence is fucking weird but, you know, it was done. That's when that's what happened. Sounds like Buffy when they did blah 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 blah. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, you know that there's there's a significant set of differences there for uh, compared to what Thor does. Uh, the same thing was sort of in Shazam, where Billy gave his adoptive siblings the same powers as him. I'm gonna have to rewatch that before I can comment on. Whether or not that was better executed, but probably was compared to Thor. Uh, Natalie Portman's suffering in a hospital bed after her lover endangers children. She can't run away from the prequels. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Maybe that was a reference. You know, Tiger could be a big fan of the prequels, even though he didn't remember they even happened. The power transfer was yellow instead of Thor's usual blue lightning, so I'm guessing it was amped by Zeus's thunderbolt. Also, check out. The Kenobi re-edit, it turns a crap series into a passable movie. Um, the only issue with that being uh, something to be understood to be true is that he's explicitly talking about Thor. Like, so if it's like, well, it's a combo of Thor and Zeus or something, um, that means that that's something that he was aware of, which means it's something that he should have suggested, at the very fucking least. They should have all... If you told the Avengers uh, that I can do this if you guys get me Zeus's Thunderbolt, I feel like the team would be like, we're going to take it off, Zeus. To be honest with you, I don't see how Zeus is more powerful than Captain Marvel. Yeah, Zeus is showing is not all that impressive. I guess the ability to incapacitate Thor, but even then, it's like, this is his home turf, I get. Being killed in one hit by his own weapon like that. Oh, wait, when you say shit. incapacitate Thor, you're talking about when he grabs him with the little things? Yeah, like when he like, holds Thor him. rips himself out of that, doesn't he? Maybe it... Maybe for a time. I don't know if the implication was that um, Thor wasn't going to resist it until... It. Yeah, like, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe it just matches the rest of the writing of power levels and shit. Yeah. As a Kiwi, I apologize for this movie. Long man, do an MOM vid. Obey your master. 
Ellie is gay, by the way. Do do a multiverse of madness video. That would be absurd. I would never. I would never make a video on. How would you Doctor finish it? Strange. There's too much to talk about. Exactly. That would be like a fucking five to six hour video or some shit. You know, that's that's an absurd idea. Never gonna happen. Next super chat says, "Milk of the rhino, nourish you massives. May the dawn's light bless you." That's a nice one. Friendly. Uh, Chad Thor one shots Thanos without hesitation. Virgin Thor ignores a still dangerous gore. We're never getting Chad Thor back. On forever. Uh. I hope Jane was an atheist before dying. Would be bummed out if I uh, went to Valhalla instead of meeting my mum in heaven. Oh, if they, dude. Oh, if Yo. they had like simultaneous fucking afterlives being confirmed, but the problem is that you, I don't know, were a Thor at the times. So you don't get to go to the other pantheons. Fucking Jesus, how would they deal with that? <laughs> like, <laughs> we already have. Who knows how many afterlives there are? There's at least two. Well, this actually, we is, well, there's loads, is got... Valhalla actually confirmed, though? Yeah, yeah. apparently in the after credit scene. I didn't see it. Um, oh, okay. We got that. So we got that. We got the Ancestral Plane, which we appears to be an afterlife. The Egyptian Midnight. one. Midnight, yeah. yeah. That's at least three. What, well, uh, surely there's more. I feel like there's probably more, right? Or are we... I think there are more. Either way, if you are... Like, let's just say bef right before T'Challa's dad died, he, like, got the powers of Thor and died in battle. Would he then be like split in two, and he would go to the two afterlives or something? Like I, I'd be oof. It's gonna cause problems at that point. It's funny as well because it's got nothing to do with criticism of religion in any way. It's simply about what the hell happens if that happens. Yeah, how does how does how does it work when you die? Just how does it work? What happens? What's going on? What is this madness? Because confirming one afterlife was bad enough in the sense that it's like, so this was the correct one, guys. But when you confirm the wall, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, God. I think Sif might have gotten five minutes of screen time. I think that's more I than she got. That. Yeah. I think she got a minute, maybe. Sometimes you guys forget how long five minutes can be. <laughs> like this, she got to say, like, fucking five lines or some shit. Poor girl. Howdy, all. She got paid. Man of the Brood and all it has shown me. I'm an aspiring action choreographer spurred on by the abundance of awful action and 90% of entertainment regarding choreography and story relevance. Your thoughts on it? Oh, I'm with you, man. Completely. Yeah. Good action mm. that's done well for narratively uh, purposeful ends. Not, it's, it's really nice to see. We love ourselves a good John Wick 1. Yeah. Uh... All of the normal things we usually talk about, right? Like, we, we understand how powerful people are beforehand. That's, like, an important part of fights being done. And then, of course, the choreography in the actual fight, be it laser blasts, gunshots, strikes with a sword, whatever it is, just stuff that represents what we believe to be their, their skill level and their uh, intentions being represented. And then, yeah, you need, like, intelligent ways for the fight to progress and end um, instead of it just being... No, arbitrary. Uh, we've lost that significantly. I don't think um, I don't think I anticipated that back with TLJ. I thought that was like an anomaly, the throne room fight, but it does feel like these days pretty much everything we've been looking at has been uh, really bad for choreography. Particularly Star Wars has been a it's been abysmal in Star Wars. Uh, the just how the way that fights are made, legitimately yeah, awful. Um, it's all bad. It's all bad. The... Uh, Boba Fett episode of Mando season two, like that whole everything about it. If you remember, it's just like the finale fucking... of the Boba Fett episode. I mean, it's hard to where do you begin? Yeah, it's just everything. It's all bad. All of the action in the show called Star Wars is terrible. Um, her dad, her dad died in her lap and showed no emotion. Oh yeah, I guess there wasn't a lot from uh, from his daughter, was there? I guess she was just so. Well, like the film didn't even give her really that much time to talk about that. What that means that her dad's dead, you know? We went straight to. Isn't it funny that Thor is her dad now? I won I wonder if they'll drop that entirely. Probably. Don't know. 
Weird coincidence, the number of rings each race got plus one ring together makes the year J.R.R. Tolkien died. One, nine, seven, three. Obviously, this is a prophecy. Yeah. But wait, why did you put him in that order? Shut up. The one ring, then obviously you go with men next, why wouldn't you? And then, of course, the dwarves, and then elves. That's just the... Uh... This is that numerology <laughs> stuff that people do with prophecies and things that I hear about. It's like, oh. That's still an wait, interesting why, coincidence, why you... though. Uh, it's, it, yeah. is, it is kind of an interesting coincidence, yeah. It's neat. That is a neat coincidence. You're so vain, you probably think this super chat is about you. Kind of. I assume so. That's it was sent fault. to us, but it could yeah. be about anything, yeah. Uh, it's not vanity. By the way, that, that catches us up on episode 190, was it 95? Yes. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, and since we're at three hours, I'll, I'll say that's the, we will close out there. However, we've had well. some in today, so what we shall do is collect the ones that came in today, and the ones that came in on the last catch-up, I think, the ones that need to be rescued. I, I, I didn't answer those, right? Yeah, I, I need to... You know, I don't think I'll, so. I'll find out. Uh, yeah, because you guys would remember if we did that, I, I'd imagine, because it would have been within the last week, so I don't think we did. Um, Definitely. So I'll collect those ones, and the one from this one, and then we will answer those on next Wednesday. And that will mean we're caught up if this Saturday we are able to answer the ones that come in on the same stream. See? It's a healthy balance. There are still, like, eight catch-ups to come out on, on, on Moolah. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, I'll probably release one tomorrow on Mula, and uh, I'll be doing open bar tomorrow, as far as I know. Um, who knows what the subjects will be. Uh, but until Saturday, that'd be a goodbye from all of us at efap.com. There is no efap.com, sorry. But there is an efap.me. There is, and it's great. Um, yeah, anything you guys want to say before I close us out? Um, good. um, I do not think so. I think that um, I think that's pretty good. I think I think we did a pretty good job. I think we did all right. All things considered, I think we did a okay. Very well. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you very much for the kind donations, and thank you for keeping us company. We shall see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Yeah, goodbye everybody. See you later. <laughs>